You know what I mean? Like, how is that a reason to just stop talking to somebody? It's like weird, man. Weird to me. Yeah. Um, we're live, by the way. Um, I don't know if you were watching yeah. the screen when I did that. I was waiting for you to say something that I could like train, like <laughs> hit it right when you said, you know what I really think? Like, as soon as you raise yeah. your voice, I know you're going to say something that's going <laughs> to, so I was waiting for that. It didn't happen, yeah. but I was like, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, like you have, so there's like in life, right? Here's your here's here's old Papa Tom coming coming yeah. with a life lesson or whatever. Yeah, um, on the soapbox. In life, you'll find <laughs> that uh, you know if somebody has a different opinion than you, good. That's like gonna happen every day of mm. your life. Everybody's going to have not everybody, but for the most part, every single day you're going to bump into somebody who disagrees with you over one thing or another. Can you imagine how petty it is? Like if some if you were at the grocery store and you picked something up off the shelf and you were like, ooh. I don't really care much for this particular flavor of Doritos. And then somebody next to you is like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Cool Ranch is the best flavor of Doritos. <laughs> like, and so that's obviously very petty. And we've gotten to this point where like, first of all, we didn't talk about politics back in the day. We didn't talk about sex back in the day. Like those were things that you didn't, what was it? Uh, sex, religion, and politics was the three things mm -hmm. that you didn't talk about at the queen's table. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, I think you taught me that like 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I was going to say, great um, reference. Yeah. <laughs> if you're having dinner with the queen, you do not talk about those three topics because they always spark debate. Right. And yeah. we used to not talk about them just in general. I mean, like, I can think back to like um, when my dad, well, when I was, you know, I was a younger or whatever, and he talked to me about voting. And he's like, that's, it's your right. It's also your responsibility. You have to do it. Like as it's, as an American, you have to do it. My dad was very like Hank Hill where like, if it was morally right, as far as he was concerned, it was legally right. Like it was legally what you had to do. So right. he said, you have this civil or this obligation as a citizen that you have to go vote. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, everybody in the chat, if you could let us know if you can hear both of us, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, but he taught yeah. me that. And then he also... Wouldn't it be funny if we were just talking right now and nobody could hear <laughs> And it was just, yeah, it was just a picture of me or whatever on the screen. I'm sure somebody would have chimed in by now, like, I can't hear you. Definitely Mike in Manitoba. Yeah, he's usually pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, he says he can. Uh, but that was his thing. And he taught me kind of like the importance of voting. And he never told me who to vote for or... Um, the values that I was supposed to look for in a candidate. He lived his life and I watched him live his life and I heard his opinion on things, but it was never like, I vote Republican. I vote for this candidate because mm -hmm. he has these values. I just watched yeah, his yeah, values yeah. and naturally that's how I became or turned into the person I am today and who I vote for today. Um, mm -hmm. But that was his thing and he kind of... Uh, he, he taught me the values just by watching, but um, he never sat down and like said, all right, here's how you vote and here's how you do this and here's how you do that. Right. And he never even told me who he voted for during elections, but he would tell me, hey, here's the good things about this person. Here's the good things about this person. And but he was very, you know, he was never like a one issue voter uh he kind of looked at the big picture until there was like a uh, a very glaring obvious thing that he was against typically abortion so he he would oh i assume i never know i never knew who he voted for but uh he always would talk about how abortion was like his hardline thing where he's like if mm -hmm. a candidate comes out and says that they're for uh these um like post or late term abortions and like uh, partial birth abortions. I mean, those were huge, big no's for him. And you, like, even if the other person was a total scumbag and like none of the things that he wanted were going to be done by this person or were uh, presented by this person, he would vote for that person just because he's like, that's my, like, there are certain things that I refuse to vote for. Um, so, but I never heard who he was voting for. And he never talked about like politics per se. Uh, right. And same thing with, I mean, beyond our discussion on certain religions or whatever, or on, on Christianity specifically, uh, I we never really talked about the the goods or bads of other religions. He was just like, hey, this is what I believe and whatever. 
Um, I, he's like, I may disagree with this one or that one, but it never came up where it was like, your religion is wrong, blah, 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 blah. He was never like mm-hmm. that. Um, and then sex, obviously. I never even got the talk when I was younger. He was like, really? so, yeah, he was like, just don't do it till you're married. And I mean, that was kind of how it was when I was, uh, when I was younger. And that's what happens when you have a, like a, a very conservative, uh, pastor yeah. for your, for your dad. <laughs> like sometimes. Yeah, they... well, I, yeah. Speaking of, you know, I was the same goes for me. I was uh, raised by a conservative pastor too, <laughs> which, you know, we, you and I have always had in common, but yeah, I don't think I ever got the talk either. I think it was the same, like premarital sex is bad, which of course, I mean, by the time I was 16, I was banging. So that didn't <laughs> change, didn't affect anything, but, um, yeah, it's interesting. That's an interesting take. Um, uh, based on your dad too like i i assume that like he he it, you know he seemed like a reasonable man when i met him he seemed like like a very funny too actually i remember him being kind of like like um uh what do you call it like a dad humor like he had a dad oh, yeah. sense of humor you know and like i remember um I, like it's vague i'm like when i went to your house that one time when we went on that road trip i i more remember like hanging out with james in his room his little cave there where he was playing like starcraft or something but i recall <laughs> your dad being very reasonable and like i think um from based on what you just said it sounds like he probably looked at things not from like a republican or a democrat perspective he looked at the issues and that's that's kind of like I mean, in my opinion, that's admirable. Like, that's how you should. Like, these are the issues I want resolved. And so whoever's going to fix them are the ones that you should be going voting for. Like, I always tell people, like, you know, I like they go, oh, you Trump this and Trump that. And I go, well, I voted for Trump because he did a crap ton of stuff for the veterans. Like, so many things for vets. And, like, right away, like, when he became president was when I was doing my – um my disability stuff for compensation and like beforehand it had been taking years for people to get this stuff but as soon as he came in and like cleaned house like drained the swamp like my disability went through in a month dude like literally a month it went through and it was like mind-blowing like i remember thinking like oh this is going to take years and maybe i'll get like some compensation and it was like all of a sudden there was money in my bank account i was like holy shit like what the like what the hell happened right and sure enough you know it was because all this swamp was drained, and now all those in uh, in at what do they call them uh, inefficient redundancies at the VA are just gone, you know. And so now it's like, um, you know, things are moving faster. And that was, you know, like I said, the reason that I was like Trump supporter because he has veterans in mind, and all the stuff that he's done, but not just that too, like the. Um, the the school thing for the GI Bill is like infinite now. Like it doesn't you, you don't lose it. Like I love that. It's great, man. I don't have to go. Oh, I gotta use this. I can go oh, at some point. I'll go finish school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's great. You know. And so I I think um, to back to what you were saying about your dad. I think that's kind of admirable where you're choosing the issues over just well they're like and I always say that too. Like I don't just vote Republican because I go well I'm a Republican. So as long as they're Republican, I'm voting for them. I don't. I don't go off of that either. I go, well, this person, you know, is saying a lot of the things that I like. So, you know, that's that's the way I go. I uh, I joke that now I'm a Trump supporter who happens to vote Republican. I could care less what party somebody is, uh, but it turns <laughs> out like Democrats just all their values are not in line with my values. I don't, I right. don't care for any of the things that they're like and the things that sound good. You know, they're never going to do. Uh, they just they lack the ability to do a lot of the things that they're promising. Uh, and when they have, um, when they have gotten into positions of power, you look at what they've done for the black community. They've done nothing for like mm-hmm. forever. Um, uh, right. But yeah, that's, so that's, um, I don't know. Like, I don't, well, you, I don't you really know what too, get... like, go ahead. No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say, you know what too is interesting. Um, talking about like, you know, I love words. I'm a huge fan of words and like, um, we're talking about like, Oh, we're Republican or you're a Democrat or whatever. I think the term conservative and liberal are like way more accurate you know like when i say conservative like when i tell people i'm conservative like that should draw upon thoughts of like well i'm you know i'm i'm not liberal about things <laughs> i don't take liberal things you know like i'm conservative i think of moral values and like the betterment of society and like progression in society and stuff whereas like liberals like the like right away and like no matter how like and you know i think this is kind of a thing probably just bias but when i think liberal i think of all these like horrible things like already i'm thinking like oh this like debauchery and like you know um i was telling my dad the other what term did i use i said it's um 
it's like obscene. Like it's obscene the things that they do. Like that video recently where that dude was in the skirt and he was like yelling at these cops and he was like, <laughs> I have this education and blah, blah, blah. You guys are idiots and this, this and that. And it's like incredibly offensive. Like their very being is like offensive, you know, because of that kind of stuff. But it's so like, it's just disgusting and offend. Like when I see that, I go, what is wrong with these people? You know, like where's the like uh, modesty and where's the, you know, like the, um, what do you call it? Um, the class, you know, like, yeah. like, and I guess that's kind of like what it comes down to, right? Is like class. You go, I look at someone, I then I someone says they're conservative, I immediately think, oh, they're classy. They probably pay their taxes. I bet you they, they have probably, values. <laughs> they probably have values. Exactly. Yes, and that's what I'm getting at here as I dance around this, trying to figure out what I'm saying is, is that when I think. Um, conservative i think they have values they have um some sort of like moral compass <laughs> you know what i mean we're liberals they go fuck it we'll do anything we'll walk around with our dicks hanging out yeah. you know and you better you better fucking like it because if you don't then then you're a fucking you know a hater or a bigot <laughs> yeah exactly and so, it's like gross like that's what it's coming to and all these weird things like all these weirdos and i'm going this is just gross and weird and like like, how is that associated with that? How is anybody, how does that appeal to anybody but like degenerates and weirdos? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? King Cracker says he, he was, he threw out the word decency, and that's a great oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, that was good. Yeah. And this was the argument, and I know I told you about it, but I'll tell the crowd about it. I had a uh, class this week. That's why we kind of had to push yesterday. I just, I, I have to drive two hours to class and then two hours back every day. Um, and it was just, so I'm up at like, 5 30 in the morning and then i'm on the road by uh six and then i gotta be there by uh eight and just to get just to get into class for and then the whole day of learning uh, and it was ethics of all things so it was christian ethics which is predominantly which is funny because christian ethics covered ethics period which kind of like should make you think like maybe ethics are loosely associated with christianity and like mm -hmm. religion so like when people say yeah. well i'm not a religious person well you practice a lot of the things that religion encourages like yeah, ethics yeah, yeah. right the old um, judeo-christian values as yeah, they say. yeah i got in trouble when i was on the skinwalker tapes last week uh, for saying judeo-christian uh and i said let me just rephrase that to christian because now we're moving away from like this judeo-christian <laughs> and yeah. you know how they feel about um zion uh, but yeah, no, they're absolutely right too, because there is a lot of, you look at a lot of the stuff that's going on and you're like, well, this is more Christian values than it is Judeo values. Um, but yeah, I, I went and it was ethics and we talked a lot about race relations. We talked about, um, uh, you know, the, the, the gender spectrum and all that bull crap and all the, like all the SJW talking points. And at one point it came up, there was a case study that we had to do where, uh, a woman, a family, and all the kids were uh, adults, and they, or all the children were adults, rather. Um, they were, it turns out, like, the sister was, uh, she turned, she came out gay. And she said, hey, for Thanksgiving, I'm going to bring my uh, girlfriend to dinner, you mm -hmm. know. And so one of the brothers said, I'm not coming then. And then the other brother said, because he had his own family he said well i'll come but my kids will not be here and so it caused like this issue within the family and right. it, the teacher the professor said what is your guys's opinion on this as um because then we kind of broke it down my thing was always i broke it down as like so here's my human response here's my uh, mm -hmm. and here's my christian response and here's my citizen response right like because you, mm -hmm. you can kind of break it down and be like well, right. as a citizen, I kind of want this. And as a Christian, I would rather this. Uh, but so he said, as a pastor, right? So the whole case study was, say, say this family, the mother or whatever comes to you and says, hey, this happened to my family. What do you recommend I do? How should I handle this? Uh, should I be angry at my sons? Whatever. So then we we're supposed to provide counsel. And I said, my answer was, I don't let my kids, and I think we talked about this the other day. So I don't, yeah, let, yeah. I don't let my kids watch gay stuff, like anything, like the LGBT thing on Netflix or Hulu. They're not allowed to watch it. If there's a movie or a show about uh, a gay couple or whatever, like Modern Family, they wouldn't be able to watch that. They wouldn't be allowed. I don't watch. I don't allow them to watch anything that normalizes homosexuality because homosexuality is abnormal, and right. uh, I would much rather them not deal with that or even see it. I. But unfortunately, the world we live in, I. 
had to give my oldest son, uh, who is 10 now, when he was six or seven, I had to give him the talk at that age because of these drag queen library readings right or whatever. yeah and i don't know what they're going to teach in the school what they're going i mean we live in kentucky so it's a very very conservative uh deep red area of the state even but i don't know based on the state's curriculum based on the common core curriculum what they are required to teach at that age and i said i would rather get out in front of it and explain to him the sort of weird shit that he's going to be told about or see or witness or whatever and so I said, I don't let my kids see that. They are aware of it. I have explained to them what it is and why when they see it, like not to be alarmed or anything, but like that it's, in my opinion, it's wrong. And uh, scripturally, it's it's wrong. And uh, biologically, it's a mutation or an abnormality. I'm like, it's it's wrong for a number of reasons. But people are going to do it, and that's their right. As uh, That's one of their human rights, and their right as a citizen of the United States of America. They're allowed to do these things. And we can't tell them no, but we can recognize that it's wrong. Just like profanity, like using profanity yeah. is frowned upon. It's not illegal, but it's frowned upon, and it's something I would rather my kids not do. So mm -hmm. I explained that to the to the class. I said, as a, if I were the pastor and I had to counsel this woman on the fly, my response would be, you are a parent, and your son is now parenting his kids. The things that you wanted to instill in your son, um, you would expect other people to respect your decisions. You should probably respect his decision not to allow his children to see that. Uh, and if that's what they want. But, you know, recognize that, oh, well, at least he's still coming. Now, the other son, I would say that's his choice. Again, uh, it's unfortunate and it sucks that your family doesn't want to get together because of this one issue. But at the same time, like, you kind of got to let them do their own things. They're adults. Mm -hmm. And these are the values that you instilled in them and uh, or that they have developed over or through their social upbringing and everything like that, or even religious beliefs or whatever the case. But these are beliefs that they have and you should probably respect them. And that, that was my opinion. Now, this other kid in the class, and I say kid because he's probably like 10 years younger than me. He, he said, uh, he raises his hand. He's all, oh, I got to disagree. I, you know, right now I'm not, a, I'm not a parent where I'm at in my life right now. However, one day I hope to be. I would I would bring my children to that. Uh, I would encourage my children to come with, and then we could have a talk about it. Uh, I think that hiding them from or hiding the world from them is an irresponsible decision. And like in the back of my mind, I'm like, listen, motherfucker. Like I wanted to like tell. <laughs> first of all, you don't have a say in this as far as how I raise my kids. You never will. And if you talk to me and try to tell me how to raise my kids, I'm gonna fuck you up. But uh, I said. Well, the, it, the conversation went on, and then I, I raised my hand. I was like, hold up. I was like, he mentioned me. that We're in a debate. You got to let because the guy was trying to move on with the class because he was running out of time. I said, he said my name. I, I get a say in this debate. And he's like, all right, you're right, you're right. And he gave, it, he gave me the floor back. And I was like, first of all, I don't hide anything from my kids. I tell them they're not allowed to watch it if they see it there to look away but at the same time i don't let them look at like if a woman with her a naked woman is on the screen they have to cover their eyes the same thing if i start seeing two guys making out on the screen the channel gets changed like blatant outright homosexual stuff like that channel gets changed um and that's and that's beyond like you say all the time like when you see that you're like ah oh. um but that's yeah. just uh that's just my opinion and i certainly don't want those values uh being shown to my kids like that is normal so i said i don't hide it from them i don't allow them to see it if i can avoid it but they know it's there and they know and i've explained to them what it is and what the what the issue is so having some kind of like freak show display of two women making out at the dinner table i don't need that to teach my kids certain values and certain things and um uh, i forget what else i said to him but i was like well, but I, was... I think it go ahead i was just gonna I, I was gonna say i think it's um it's a good point and you know i like i i talk about this often where what based on what you said where you said you know i don't want them to, I don't want it to be normalized to my kids. And I think that's kind of like always been, well, as of late, it's been an issue in society. And like, I may have told this story before, but like, I think, I think that shame is important. You know, I think, and I, I know it's probably one of my common rants. I think it's important that we shame people so that they understand that the behavior isn't approval, isn't approved of. And like, um, 
I think I told this story before. When I was in Taiwan, I was dating Rita, this this Taiwanese girl, and I was in Taiwan for a few months. And um, we went to go visit with some of her friends that she had been in college with. And um, we had, like, lunch with them at this, like, Indian food place or whatever. And they were all these, like, you know, they're Taiwanese, so they're all, like, super skinny, like, you know, that's how I see them. They're all skin and bones. <laughs> and so we get there, and the and all the girls, all her friends from college, like, six years ago, right, they're going, oh, my gosh, you are you put on so much weight. You're so fat. And they kept saying it to, to Rita, my girlfriend at the time. They kept going, you're so fat. You got so fat. And so afterwards, when we left, I was like, man, fuck those bitches, man. They were treating you like shit. Like, how do you call those people your friends? Like, they kept calling you fat and blah, blah, blah. And I had to go, you're not fat, you know. You look great. Like, like really, she did, she did look great. Like, she wasn't fat at all but to them right right their culture like they see you putting on weight and it's not they're not shaming and she had to explain that to me she goes no no they're not trying to be mean they're not shaming me they're saying like oh like are you unhealthy or like they're concerned about me because i put on weight they're not saying like oh you're so fat so gross you know they were telling me that like it's probably time to lose weight in like um like not really i wouldn't want to say a respectful way but in a like concerned way like like oh what happened you put on weight right and so it kind of like boggled my mind, right? Here I am, an American, going, you can't go around calling people fat, you know, which of course I do anyways. But the point is, is that like she she had to explain to me that the difference in their culture where like they go, they tell each other that. They go, yeah, man, it's not a big deal. Like shame is important. And, and that kind of like opened my eyes, right? I always say get the view of other cultures, like go travel the world so you can see what the real world is like because you'll open your eyes. You'll see like these different cultures and you go, holy shit, there's a different way of thinking than what I have fucking had had my whole life, right? This little small scope of podunk wherever you live. And so you go travel the world and you see these different views and you go, holy crap, it turns out that shaming is kind of important because people need to understand that their behavior is not natural or, or isn't approved by society you know and so back to what you were saying where it's like you don't want to normalize things like when we start condoning behavior and we go oh it's okay he's, he's a little weird and it's okay eccentric and we like play down pl we downplay the words and the terminology you know and, and go oh, you can't say faggot you got to say homosexual or whatever and so and like yeah that can be considered hate speech and yeah that can be considered you know uh, offensive or sexist or whatever you want to call it but like when you keep lowering the bar to like oh it's okay it's okay and we keep saying it's okay and we keep normalizing it then everybody is okay with being weird and there's all these weird things going on and the next thing you know you have the you know the furries and the pedos coming out of the woodwork going oh we're okay too right and and then people are fucking animals and children <laughs> and that's it man that's when we descend into chaos is when we don't have enough shame that's that's my uh that's my in summation here is if we, if we don't shame people, we're going to descend into chaos. So what happens, and this is perfect, this is a perfect uh, transition here. Um, speaking of uh, abnormalities, transition, right? Um, mm -hmm. What happened with this whole Black Lives Matter thing, okay? So this week, I left the, the campaign of like, you know what, the Black Lives Matter group i get it i understand i support them i encourage them to continue to try to voice their uh angst or whatever and and i i'm okay with them protesting i'm even okay with them being mad right because it, the dude got murdered right george floyd mm -hmm. he got murdered um but i'm okay with them being mad and that discussion that we had about you know fighting the cops and all that and and i'm like i get it i understand the anger and I said, and most, and I even said on that Antifa episode, I said, I don't even think that Black Lives Matter is largely responsible for this chaos. I said, it's the mm -hmm. Antifa kids. It's the white kids yeah. from the suburbs yeah, yeah. Uh, right. who are just trying to ride on the coattails of this revolution because they couldn't yeah. start their own. Uh, so I like, I was that guy. They lost me this week because of that whole attacking the children's hospital and where they right. were like throwing the bricks at the children's hot like the windows and then like they destroyed that dude's car and the dude brought his kids back to the car from the hospital uh yeah. and they had to get into this broken car like that was all stomped on and windows broken and shit and like they didn't even like stop to let this dude go they th these folks had to like fight their way out of that block where people were throwing bricks and shit at a children's hospital no less yeah um, that's ridiculous and even without that, even if I ignored that, I realized these last 
what how how long has it been since this whole George Floyd thing? Um, but this like two this, months, right? Yeah. So like this whole time, every day they get a little bit bolder, right? Mm -hmm. And so at first it was, hey, let's destroy our own neighborhood. I'm like, frankly, I don't care because I don't live there. You guys should care because those are your friends and family and neighbors. But I can't from from here where I'm at. I frankly don't care if you destroy your own shit because you're just you're hurting yourselves. Uh, but it, then they were like, well, let's fight the police. OK, I get that. Like, I can see why you're angry. And that seems like the reasonable target. If you're mad at the police that you would go after the police. I get that. I don't necessarily support fighting police uh, for a number of reasons, because A, because I respect the police, but B, because you'll get killed. <laughs> like you'll get shot by, <laughs> uh, you'll get tear gas, flashbang, yeah. rubber bulleted, uh, like all that stuff. And then ultimately you could end up dying because if they feel legitimately threatened, they will kill you. And I mm -hmm. will not have, I will not lose any sleep over that. Um, nice. And that's another thing that we need to teach our kids is to respect police officers. And maybe you don't have to like them, but you have to recognize that if they are telling you to do something, you should do that thing. If you don't want to end up getting killed. And I talk to my kids yeah. about that all the time. Um, but then like next thing you know, they're tearing down statues in like national areas and like public places. And then they're talking about moving into sub mo or like bringing the protests into the suburbs. They even brought it to that ultra like hoity toity, like rich neighborhood with the gated community that they broke into that they said they didn't, but they broke the gate down and then they went into this private property in a gated community. And then that white couple or whatever the, in the you know, the polo and the khakis or whatever that he right. came out with his AR-15. Um, and then the chick came <laughs> out with her little uh, six hour, it's like a little James Bond pistol. Um, but yeah, I mean, they come out to defend their property. I mean, that's another step in a direction of like, they're seeing what they can get away with. And it's very much right. like when kids, when you tell your three year old, don't cross this line. The first thing they're going to do is toe the line. And then they're yeah. going to inch and inch and inch a little bit further until you got to smack them on the butt and send them. To, and then they go and run off crying. Um, mm -hmm. And but never do they actually yeah. fight the parent. Right. Like the kids, as soon as you give the kid a smack on the butt or slap their hand or whatever, they stop and they they run away. And that's exactly what's going to happen to these people. Once somebody actually uh, they meet some kind of resistance, they didn't charge that family who they were going to break into that house. I guarantee it. They were going to loot that house. And then all of a sudden they came out with guns and the, the crowd was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's move back, move back, move off the property. Uh, once they meet any kind of resistance, they stop and they go away. And we're not stopping them is the problem. We're letting them get away with all this. And especially, and then, like I said, with this children's hospital and the statues, I mean, like they're doing new stuff every day. And even with statues, it used to be Confederate soldiers, which personally i think is wrong and it's not because i'm like some kind of rebel flag waving uh confederate it's because at the end of the civil war they granted veteran status to all the members of the confederacy uh as united states veterans and so when you tear down a statue of a confederate soldier you're destroy you're tearing down the statue you might as well tear down a statue of i don't know i don't know who's a popular modern i don't know dwight eisenhower right general eisenhower or uh any like famous washington which they did they tore down a washington statue but you're tearing down like these statues of veterans legitimate veterans who have been granted veteran status by uh, the government and so i think that's wrong i also think it's pointless i mean if they feel like if they feel that threatened by a statue i don't i don't know what to tell them they're clearly like uh so self-conscious and they're so they lack the ability to i don't know recognize things that are not a threat that these people i think that they're legitimately starting to lose their minds a little bit but um with throwing rocks at a children's hospital like at what point do we not get out there and start beating some asses yeah and, and yeah man i'm with you on that and i'm yeah. just i'm honestly and i'm just as much to blame as the next guy i suppose uh, because I'm just waiting, frankly, and I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to get in trouble for it. Uh, I'm just waiting for the shot heard around the world. Once that first shot is taken, where I feel like that's the the bat signal for everybody to <laughs> get up and do it. Like at yeah, that point, mount up. yeah, at that point, <laughs> I'm going to absolutely load up and I'm going to head out and I'm going to do my duty as a as a true American patriot and uh, a son of liberty. But I can't I 
can't bring myself to be that first shot. And is that cowardly? I suppose that it is. Uh, and but I can I'm I'm okay with that. But right now I've got a family. I've got a wife and kids. Uh, once that one guy gets out there, whoever the man who is braver than I gets out there and starts beating the asses of these folks who are who have taken it to extremes and have frankly ruined any positive that Black Lives Matter has brought forward. Um, as soon as somebody gets out there and starts fighting back, I will be right on the front line with them. However, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fat chicken, and I haven't gotten out there and done it myself. <laughs> but I think we're at that. Well, we're, I see it as I, I we're nearing that I point. It. I see it as like um, if someone like okay, well, like these things happen, and, and we go, oh, that's fucked up, and somebody should do something. And like I don't, I mean, I don't see it as like cowardly. I see it as like they haven't crossed your actual line yet. And like that's the thing is like we see people getting their lines crossed and it angers us and we go we go should I be Batman is it time to be ba fucking Batman right and like and it's not it's really not because like you you see it and you go well they should be like the people that are having their rights infringed should be the ones that are going yeah dude it's time to stand up and fight back and like they haven't come to my door yet they haven't come to my neighborhood yet and like I look at that as like they're they're there should be like lucky they're lucky they haven't because you know the moment that they do that's when i step up and go okay time to get out the katana time to get out everything because they're not going to take what's mine you know what i mean and that's how i see it is like you know all these other people that things are happening to them and they're going oh all these things are going on and what do we do and i go well then stand up for your rights and you know fight back you know but here we are go and it angers us we see it and it angers us and, and i and like you said it's kind of like well Somebody should be doing something, and that's kind of, I think, and I know this is kind of a negative thing, but that's a lot of people are kind of frustrated at the Republican Party because they're going, what What are you guys doing? Like, what is all this stuff happening in these things? But, like, the problem with that is, is that, well, a lot of these things are happening in Democratic-run countries, or states, I mean, and you can't sit here and go, well, it's it's the Republicans' fault when the Democrats are the ones running the damn states. Right, you and know? they're Democrat, uh, the mayor is a Democrat of these major cities that it's happening in. Like, so... It goes back to kind of my original point of like, why should I give a shit about that? Because it's not where I live. It's I don't have anyone I know or love or care about in these yeah. uh, in these particular cities in these neighborhoods where it's happening. Yeah. So again, I I blame myself a little bit because I'm I'm being selfish and I'm being maybe a little cowardly because I should care. There there are good people in those areas and there are innocent people in those areas. I should be doing something. But again, yeah. like you said, it's Democrat run uh, primarily states and well, not we can't even say that because uh, Minnesota, I believe, as a governor who's a Republican. But regardless, the cities where it's happening, they're all uh, Democrats. And so they should be doing something. And I know there's Republicans there who should be and not even Republicans who gives a shit what their party is. There should be people there who at least value the way of life that we have now and don't want kids in a children's hospital to look out the window and see a bunch of people throwing rocks at the windows like that's um that's unacceptable and th and that was my line and i guess this is going to lead to my question and then we got to move on and actually talk about the topic or something oh yeah um but i think that's that was my line where black lives matter lost me entirely right. and i've never been a huge fan of them but like right. i got what they were doing like i understood and i understood yeah, their yeah. frustration i still understand yeah. their frustration i disagree with the entire movement now they lost me when they attacked the children's hospital and even if it wasn't a children's hospital regardless say it's say it was like a, a regular hospital or say it mm. was even just an office building for <laughs> that makes pens or something i don't know like whatever it was like it had nothing yeah. to do with anything frankly they well, were just even in, even in war there's that uh, there's that geneva convention in war where like even those things that are sacred like churches and hospitals you don't attack those like even right. in war we have that where it's like war is chaos like even people know that like in in that time when like fighting is like required when you're required to fight like even churches and hospitals and like like you said like the, as soon as they hit that that uh, hospital man for me it was like when they first started hitting churches like burning down church i was like what the like what is wrong with these people and the funny thing is is i'm not even religious but i look at it as like man like is nothing sacred anymore? You know what I mean? Like, is nothing sacred? And like, literally, like, that's like house of worship, right? That's what they call them. House of worship. Like, can you not let these people like be religious? Like, what? The, like, what the fuck, man? Like, that's how I see it. And like, again, like, I'm not religious at all, you know, and like, I have, well, I don't say I'm not religious. I'm not 
I'm not uh, affiliated. affiliated. With any. Yeah, affi- yeah, exactly. And so I go, I, but I, I understand religion. I understand like the benefit in society. I think somebody in the chat even mentioned, I want to say it was um, King Cracker about how the all religions tend to have like a set of values. And like, that's the thing. And like, I always talk to my dad about this. I was like, you know, I don't have anything against religion. You know, well, like the good ones, <laughs> you know, the ones that are going, hey, like, be a peaceful person, like, you know, do unto others and all that stuff, you know, and you go, well, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's preaching good things and it's teaching people to, like, have good values, like, there shouldn't be, like, people shouldn't, like, cause problems to those because they're not doing anything wrong. They're not out there trying to hurt you. They're out there trying to be better and be better for society. Like, if you take away all the other other stuff, you know, the surface stuff, and you look at it at its core, at its core, religion is just a way to be a better person. And like, why would that be a bad thing? And why would you go and try to like, t- tear that down? You know, like that to me is like, a, it's a sign that society is crumbling, because there's like all this weird crap going on right now. And like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, the things that are sacred and good in life and like that are helping us be better human beings and better to each other like why would you want to like attack that you know unless like and and like you know it's hard like i'm always shaking my head and going well you know good and evil is relative and right and wrong is relative because you can't really define it unless you're you know um unless saying that it is or it is yeah, exactly. Unless you have a side, it's really just opinions. But like when you look at something like that and you see it as the betterment of society or at least the betterment of human beings, how can that not be good? Like how can it not be good when progressing and being better to each other and helping society evolve um, to be better or be like um, just progression in general? You know, like how is that not good? Would you rather devolve like into beasts? You know what I mean? Which is what's happening. And like, I know we we got on the soapbox so quick in this episode. Right at the beginning, we're already pounding our. Well, at least now we can table. just now we can just talk about dicks and farts and stuff after this. <laughs> but I'm just my point is that you know, like, how can people not see that? And that's always been my my whole. And I'm always ranting to my dad about this too. As I go, how can people not see that? That like, there's this line between these things. Like, one side is trying to tear down all the good things in society and being like obscene and weird and like like weird right and then the other side is going we want good things for society we want to better each other and we want like have to have values like how can a normal person not see that and go well the side that i want to be on is the side where people are nice to each other (laughs) so i guess mike i I got a couple (laughs) questions for you one of them is like kind of what what I was going to say earlier uh, to close it out, but we'll, we'll keep doing this because this is actually pretty interesting. Um, yeah. So what, um, I guess my question, and this is for everybody too, who's uh, perhaps an LGBT ally, LGBT ally. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I corrected myself. I'm sorry. Uh, but these allies, right. In what way does the LGBT movement contribute to s- the forward advancement or to, for the advancement of humankind. Um, right. Everybody's mad at Christians, right? Well, not everybody, but like a lot of people are mad at Christians. This is why they burn down the churches and all that. Because, you know, there there's a lot of uh, pro-life, which removes, it makes it more difficult to have punch card abortions, right? Uh, so that's an opinionated thing. I think, mm-hmm. like, why would you kill a baby that's perfectly healthy when there are all these families who are trying to adopt? I don't know. Right. Uh, it's a selfish thing, obviously, is what it ends up boiling mm-hmm. down to is I don't want to carry a baby to term. It would slow down my my own personal advancement. And, it, you know, I don't want to have to do that crap. But I'll tell you right now, I know somebody who's right now being a surrogate mother for a gay couple out of California to which I applaud that. I'm like, OK, well, good. Like she has this baby and they want to have this baby rather than aborting this baby. They're taking care of her through this process so that she can have this baby. I'm like, OK, like I'm very like I say Republican only because a lot of my values are very libertarian uh, with the exception mm-hmm. of the the abortion argument. But I think libertarians get a, a few things too wrong and on a lot of my one issue uh, voting. And that would be one of them would be why I'm very anti or why I'm not necessarily I don't call myself a libertarian. Uh, But that's one thing like they'll take care of you if you are pregnant and you say, hey, I'm having a baby. I can't afford it. I saw an ad earlier where a pro-life organization is saying, hey, this woman has has an abortion scheduled. Um, 
on such and such a day, but she says that the only issue that she's not going to take care of it is her finances. Would you care to donate for that? Um, and like that, those are things that are available, but people are so quick to just be like, I'm going to get an abortion because it's so convenient or whatever. Yeah. Um, right. But that's one thing that the church has a very like strong opinion on is pro-life. All life is sacred. Uh, and then you have like, what else? Oh, they don't care much for gay marriage in some denominations. Some denominations are totally cool with it in the Christian uh, church. Um, but, you know, that, that's causing a lot of schism within those de denominations is the gay marriage. But frankly, like most most of us don't care. Like we're just like, well, we would never do it. It's wrong according to scripture, but based on your interpretation, your added doctrine within this particular denomination, it's okay. And uh, like we would never turn somebody away from the church because they're gay, but we would also remind them of, hey, this is what the scripture says if they ever asked about it. Uh, my dad was very, uh, he was very vocal about his opposition to homosexuality and he would always preach on it and people would leave the church over it within really? the United Methodist Church. Yeah. Uh, and then you have what, like fighting against this whole transgender movement and the the decency issue. Right. And that's a big thing. Like, I don't want my kids seeing some dude dressed in all leather crawling around on all fours because that's fucking weird, like you said. And it's abnormal. And it goes against like like these are things that the the Christian church is very like adamant that like, hey, these things are wrong. We don't agree with them uh, in, in some cases. Right. And. But nobody's saying don't like you can't do them. We're saying these are things that we don't believe in because, frankly, what do they do to help better mankind? Yeah. Versus like the Christian church, the things that it does and it advocates those things better mankind, even from an objective standpoint, yeah. the beliefs. Yeah. If you are true, a true Christian, you truly believe and you truly follow the words of the New Testament. Great. You're going to make the world a better place. But yeah. When you've got issues that are just weird, right, that, that we call weird, we'll just use that word, we'll continue to use that word, but like, you know, homosexuality or the transgender movement or pedophilia, which yeah. is illegal, but there are people who advocate for like, hey, it's okay to be attracted to kids as long as you don't act on it. Well, I've never heard of anybody who like, I really like cheeseburgers, <laughs> but I'm not going to eat them. You know, like at some point you're going to cave, you're going to have a yeah. day where you're just like... I'm going to fuck a kid because yeah. I am attracted to kids. And that's what it is. So anyways, very much against the things that don't advance mankind. In what way does the LGBT movement actually advance mankind as a species? Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. That's a good point because like basically what you said is like in terms of like society and like the way we, um, our value system, I guess you could say, but like in, in contrast to like scientifically, you know, like I always say, well, get rid of the weak, man. We can't evolve as a species if we keep coddling these weak and like whatever. But like really, if you think about it, like there, it's a hindrance to society. It's like um, an anomaly or like we even say like a mutation. Like if it's a gene, if it really is a gene, then it's a mutation. And it that's goes against something the that... natural order of spreading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like exactly my point is like it's preventing our evolution. And that's I'm always like ranting about that. You know, I go, we're too focused on technology. We need to be focused on biology and figure out how we can evolve and become, you know, super being. Like I want superpowers, dude. I'll I'll say that till I'm blue in the face. And like at the, at every time somebody shows up and they're going, oh, we gotta protect these weirdos. I'm going, well, how how are we letting these weirdos procreate when if there's genes, if there's actual genes that's what they're claiming that there are genes and mutations we're letting these weirdos keep polluting the gene pool you know then we're never going to evolve as a species you know and that's just you know to add to your rant i just wanted to make sure that there was a scientific aspect in there. yeah no <laughs> that and i appreciate that <laughs> i appreciate that because mine is usually just like hey this is because i'm always like quick to be like fuck your feelings but then like i'm like personally i feel yeah. you know like yeah, yeah. and then I'll, I'll throw my opinion in or whatever without any kind of science backing it but yeah that's a big thing it's like they're clogging the gene pool and they're ruining uh what could be potential because what happens when and and we'll continue with the science is like what is natural adaptation like when you have mm -hmm. kids here's a fun fact when you have kids uh and this has happened since the dawn of existence right like when when something has offspring the kids are never the same there's always like mutations within each one like each one gets something different from the parents so if say you have 
10 kids, and we'll just use 10 because it's a nice round number. Uh, say you have 10 kids. Not one of them is going to be exactly the same, but one of them is going to be maybe have the ability to be faster, like if the dad was a fast one. Maybe three of them are able to be mm -hmm. fast. However, between those three, there are still going to be differences. One of them might be stockier. One of them might have more ability to uh, develop muscles. One of them will be scared of snakes right like it's just random like some and it's very that's what it is it's very random the genetic creation of this offspring and the whole purpose of that is to ensure that one of them makes it and that's it and mm -hmm. uh and it's it's like nature's way of ensuring yeah. the continuation of the species yeah, so yeah, when yeah. you are the one who can't procreate guess what you're the weak link and you're the one yep. who wasn't supposed to make it or wasn't expected <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And or maybe and, and people will argue this one, too. And they'll say that uh, when species go through this period of where they create homosexuals, it's because the population is too great, which I might agree with that point. I'm, like, our population is a little too high. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that means you weren't supposed to make it like that's <laughs> And so like in the old like even modern China, really, like when they would throw out the girls, like they would just dump them mm -hmm. because they didn't want yeah. them. They didn't need them. Um, that, and back in Roman days when they used to just chuck the weak ones or the deformed yeah. ones, the that's Samoans, what should have happened. They only bred, the Samoans, they only bred with the strongest in the tribe. That was the only way that you were allowed to breed in, in the original Samoan tribes. Is that, That's why all those – like if you ever meet a Samoan, they're always ridiculously huge. <laughs> they're always like really big people and like it's because their tribe only let the strongest ones breed. <laughs> I think it's the same with the Maori too. Those crazy, that's crazy a, bastards. <laughs> that's a wolf That's a wolf trait too. Like you, you yeah. probably know this. It's like when yeah, they yeah. talk about the alpha, the alpha mm -hmm. male and the beta female – which is mm -hmm. funny too because beta um yeah. but yeah the the alpha male it has nothing to do with his leadership ability or like the because oh, he's called the pack leader too it's not mm -hmm. the same as like humans leading he's not necessarily a leader but he's the best of the pack and he's the only one that's allowed to breed because they recognize that hey he's the strongest we want more of him to build up our pack and to make Eugenics, up our pack man. because we Fucking can eugenics. yeah because we'll be safer with him so the weaker males aren't allowed to breed uh, and then also the the beta female she's the strongest and and best fit for female uh for reproduction so that's the whole idea and uh, it makes sense that they would do it that way but again it gets to a point of like where are we um at what point are we stopping Mm -hmm. people from the life liberty and the property it's never been about the pursuit of happiness but life liberty and property mm -hmm. um at what point are we depriving people of these things that we kind of hold to be sacred in america uh, and then i guess we'll we'll do this one quick question on the same topic before we move on since we'll probably be at about an hour before, in the duologue before know, we even right? get to the thing <laughs> uh, we get to the top but yeah we won't even do it today you had me at rant um mm -hmm. but what at what line so this takes us back to the whole when do we step in when do we intervene right yeah uh at what point do you feel you would step in regardless of like anybody else stepping in at what point would you say okay enough is enough i have to do something i have to get involved and and not in like a because we're kind of like already in a critical or a, mm -hmm. a, yeah i guess a critical way of speaking to these people like we tell them hey this is wrong this is stupid and you guys are being ridiculous yeah. like we're already at that point but at what point do you say okay like do you do the spongebob meme where it says i right, i'm gonna head out you know or you get up <laughs> and you gotta go and do some violent things to stop these people right at what point what line would somebody have to cross the group have to cross mm -hmm. before you got yeah. involved Right. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a, that's a uh, that's a tough question because my instinct would be to say, well, the moment they hurt my family, like, like anybody that I actually care about, you know what I mean? Like people that I'm close to and that I, I'd, I'd go, what the, you know, where I'd shake my head or whatever. Um, but then at the same time, like, like after saying that, I go, well, why would I let it get that far? Right. You know, like, why would I let it get to that point where they finally come to my home? Like that to me is like negligent. You know, like like if it's at your door, that means you weren't doing something to prevent it from get to your, getting to your door. And so, like, I guess I have to step back and look at that, look at that and go, well, 
what, at what point really is it going to make me go, it's time. It's time to get out there and do something. And I, 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 it's a tough question, man. That's a tough question to answer, to be honest. I don't know. I, and like, I, it's funny, like going back to what you said about, well, I'm a coward. I, I refuse to say that. And like, I have to like kind of, uh, scold you for saying that too, because I strongly, <laughs> I strongly disagree with that. I strongly disagree just based on the fact that you, you and I both served. And I, and it's funny, man, like, and I know this is a little top off topic, but I had this guy one time, um, he goes, he was saying, oh, not all soldiers are heroes. And I hate it when people say a soldier's a hero when they didn't do anything but sit in garrison, blah, 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 blah. And I did that old, I did the old chestnut that you do where I go, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Hold on there, chief. Right. And I go, I go, but I go, but hang on. I go, if they took the, had the nuts to volunteer, then they knew that no matter what, at some point, deployment is a possibility. They knew that at some point there's a chance that they will go to war, that they will have to go to confront some sort of combat, right? They will have to do that. So no matter how you look at it, there is courage in that alone, you know, and going, you know what? I'll face that if it comes. And so maybe somebody didn't get lucky enough to go to the, I say lucky enough, they didn't get to go, you know, like us to Iraq or Afghanistan, you know, like they didn't get to go out there and see war or have, you know, have to dodge law, uh, what do you call it? I direct fire, you know, like they didn't have to deal with that. So what? They still did their duty. They still stood up and signed a contract. Nobody told them you have to go. They had the courage to go. And man, I'll tell you what, I remember when I first enlisted, I was terrified as shit, dude. I was terrified as shit because I thought uh, flying on that plane to Fort Jackson, I thought, what the fuck am I doing? What is <laughs> well, this is insane? What was I thinking? Like I knew and, you know, it, it, like to take it another notch further when we were going into Iraq, I had no idea what to expect, which we came to find out it was a total joke. <laughs> But, like, going there, I remember there was this other sergeant that, like, had never deployed either. He was, like, a staff sergeant. And, like, he was sitting there with terror in his eyes. And me, young Private Villalobos, fuzzy private, I was looking at him, looking to him, going, this guy should be the one that's the pillar of, like, courage and strength. And he looks like a puss. And so I'm sitting there going, <laughs> I have no fucking idea what to expect here. But the fact of the matter is, is I did that. I got on the plane. I didn't run from that. And the same goes for you, which is why I, I, I have to, like, scold you for saying coward because I think anybody that, that stands up and goes, you know what, I'm going to serve my country, I'm going to do my duty, and if I have to go to war and face death, then I'll do that. Anybody that ha that chooses to face death like that is not a coward. I'll, that's what I'll say. And like, you know, and I don't think that the situation, going back to our main topic, I don't think that the situation it has anything to do with cowardly. It's kind of like it's chaotic. And so we don't have that that moment where, like I said before, you know, how, at what point do I go? And it's like, we're questioning ourselves now. So we're kind of confused to go, when do I need to act? At what point do I need to act? And we're ready. Like <laughs> if anybody's ready, Tom, <laughs> you are ready. Like you, you've got, I always say your precious armory. Right. And like, if anybody's ready, it's you. And so I think it's like that moment when you go, you're waiting for the signal and being like, <laughs> Being like soldiers, former soldiers, we're waiting for somebody to give us the call and go, hey, man, it's t it's time, right? We're waiting for that call from the commander or the company or whatever to go, time to load up and suit up and whatever. So that, I guess that's, because I don't know the point either. So when, I'm glad you didn't have a set thing, because uh, that would definitely be, at that point, it would be too late uh, if, if it got to your doorstep. And I mean, that would be the obvious answer too, is if it snuck up on you. I mean, there are some people, I mean, I guess if I, if it happened to me, yeah. I would be less surprised. Um, if it happened to you, I would be less surprised than if it were somebody in say rural Wyoming, right? Because I'm right. I'm in the suburbs of Cincinnati, which is a very like, yeah. uh, and right outside of, or I'm about an hour and a half away from Louisville, which is where mm -hmm. that, where they're doing protests now too, for the same thing. That whole George Floyd thing overshadowed that other incident where an EMT, a female EMT who happened to be black, was at home in her apartment and the cops kicked in the door and shot her because they thought that she was this uh, the person that they were looking for, who coincidentally had already been caught and was already wow. in jail. Like they had caught her uh, like right around the same time, but they did a no knock raid, kicked in the door, blew her away. And so she is another she got, totally got overshadowed by george floyd very again like the cops fucked up like yeah. there's no denying that like yeah. there should have been it up. Yeah, <laughs> they should have uh <laughs> like been communicating better somebody should have said hey 
we got this APB out for this particular individual. We got them. You know, don't, you know, go ahead and remove it from your to-do list. Uh, somebody should have said something. Furthermore, they shouldn't have kicked in somebody's door <laughs> and just shot. Like, I don't yeah. know I don't know what the circumstances were around it, but they were at the wrong house anyways. So yeah. it was just like an all-around botched job by the police. Yeah. And these there are people out there right now that are protesting it still, uh, very much like the George Floyd situation. Um so I'd be less surprised if it happened to me where they like showed up one day in my neighborhood or in my town, like my little sub town, like small town or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, I would be more surprised and more disappointed, I think, in folks in rural communities in, say, Wyoming or Utah, who all of a sudden Black Lives Matter and Antifa showed up on their doorstep and right. they were like, I wasn't prepared. I didn't expect, you know, like, how did this yeah, happen? Because yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. going to those places. Definitely, yeah. Uh, but... As far as I know, I don't have, I don't know the answer. I think I kind of thought like jokingly, I had said, when they start tearing down statues of Jesus, then I'll get involved. Because like, who, <laughs> who hates Jesus? I mean, I know there's people out there, but like, right. who wants to tear down a statue of Jesus? That seems like a little over the top. But now they're tearing down statues of Jesus. And, and here I am still like, what moving the goalpost like well maybe when they tear down <laughs> you know when they go into coliseums and tear down uh, ancient relics from christ's time on earth uh th like that's like the moving of the goalpost that i'm doing and i'm like man so that's kind of why i'm down on myself about it you're right it's right. not it's not out of cowardice it's it's more out of not knowing i guess yeah. and, and the chaos that yeah exactly but you know like nietzsche says from chaos through chaos comes order uh, so I'm very excited to see what happens with all this, and when it happens, I'm 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 curious to see what comes of this. We actually had a uh, a, a message, okay, uh, from somebody who is watching the show who happens to have my cell phone number. I won't say who it is because he likes to remain anonymous. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, uh, "Who will be fighting when it gets to that point? Antifa, Black Lives Matter, or the government?" And I responded with, "Yes," uh, because <laughs> I think that I think. My opinion, and gosh dang, we're going to run. We may as well just skip the whole topic. No, we have to do you the think? topics because we, we did a poll. We've got enough but, for yeah, it. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of time. Um, yeah. I have an opinion on what the American Civil War II is going to look like, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, let's do our shot real quick because it's been sitting here. Oh, yeah. It's been, it's been winking at me this whole time. Like, come on, Tom. When are we going to do let's, the shot? Um, let's toast to the... Uh... The fall of Chaz. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We could definitely talk about that, too. God bless Chaz. Yeah. I like somebody said Chaz has been reduced to uh, a pile of trash and, and litter. And then somebody was like, Chaz has always been a pile of trash and litter. <laughs> <laughs> so to chat to the, exactly. down, the fall of the fall of Chaz and proof that mm -hmm. communism, no matter where and when and how it's implemented, it never works. Cheers. The fall of jazz. The like great, jazz. like it's going to be like you know we had the fall of the Chi this Chinese dynasty. We had the fall of Rome. The fall of Chaz. <laughs> like let's not forget Chaz. Um, history books will look back favorably on the 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 experiment that was Chaz um, or Chop or whatever the fuck it's called. Whatever it ends up being called, I imagine it'll be Chop because they won't want. That's what happens with history, right? <laughs> they don't call yeah. it like the embarrassing name. Like imagine if the Nazis were originally called the dick sucking penis party like they wouldn't <laughs> yeah, they, and then they were like whoa yeah, yeah, whoa yeah. let's change it because that sounds a little gay let's change it to the nazi party naturally refer to it as the, Na the nazi party in, in history because dick sucking pussy party is it's stupid so i think they'll yeah. they'll call it chop just because chaz <laughs> was the autonomous zone and they quickly realized they were not autonomous and they couldn't claim that um yeah. but i think uh the american civil war ii will or has already started frankly i think it's already started uh, much like, or you can make the right. argument that we are in the Harper's Ferry portion of the civil, the C American Civil War too, um, which is Harper's Ferry is actually a fascinating story in which case, in which uh, um, if you look it up, you'll find that there were a lot of people there who had nothing to do with each other, but who ultimately went on to be famous for very different reasons, such as John Wilkes Booth, our, uh, Robert E. Lee. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other characters, but they all had nothing to do with one another. They all happened to be there, and then they all went on to be famous for very different reasons. Uh, but anyways, I digress. I think we're at that point, if not mm -hmm. already started. I've been saying that the American Civil War II is going to look a lot like the Syrian Civil War, in that the Syrian Civil War has several different combatants within this, the country, right? But 
they also have all these allies from other nations who have come to help. And sometimes the allies who came to help don't like each other. Like we were allied with, uh, we, whatever freaking side, I don't remember. I've, I've lost track of the Syrian civil war at this point, <laughs> but cause it's so chaotic. And I think that's where we are. And this is why I think it's a good example. Uh, but we were on the same side as Russia and we are not allies with Russia. Right. Uh, but we were working with them. Unfortunately, they also were trying to help this other sect who we hate. And then at the same time, so and so's involved. And we hate so and so. But we're working with them now in the Syrian civil war, or we were at the time. And like it was just so complicated. And looking from the outside in, it's easy. To look at it, it's not really easy because, like I said, it's very complicated. But it's easy to look at the data and look at what's going on and being like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here, this and mm -hmm. this and this. And we have all the information. But yeah. the problem is we on the streets here, we wouldn't recognize the sort of things that uh, people looking outside in would mm -hmm. recognize, right? And they have in their news reporting their history books whatever the way that they write it they're going to have a better idea of the big picture than we do because we're invested right and here we have because i don't even know all the combatants if you look up on wikipedia or wikipedia if you look at all the combatants of the syrian civil war it'll just it's a fucking like two and a half pages long and they're like so and it's like overlapping like some kind of weird fucked up venn diagram uh but here in the united states we're in this very similar situation it just looks a little different because we have look at it this way you've got black lives matter you've got the police You've got mm -hmm. conservatives, you've got liberals, you've got whites, you've got blacks, mm -hmm. you've got, um, I don't Antifa. know, Antifa, you've got everybody else, because everybody else mm -hmm. hates Antifa. Uh, but, <laughs> like, you've got those things. And then sometimes you end up working, like, one of your parties that you're in ends up working with somebody you would never have expected to work with, for instance. Right. Um I don't know. Uh, so say liberals and black lives matter, pretty obvious that those would end up tying together. But what about like when conservatives and black lives matter work together because they recognize a common foe in Antifa? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not something that you would expect or police and conservatives pretty easy to recognize because conservatives typically side with the police where we are very much into law and order and the natural order of like a modern society. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of these blurred lines of like who's fighting who. And we don't even know because you would think if you were, say, of hey, I'm in this because I'm a conservative. I want the traditions and everything of the United States, these Christ Christian traditions in the United States. That is why I am fighting. But then, like, you're also... Um, You've got cops who are like, look, man, I'm here because Black Lives Matter is trying to kill me. Like, they hate us, you know, and so does Antifa. And then I'm like, well, you know what? I guess I'm kind of with the cops, too, because, like, I'm not a cop, but, like, I respect what they're doing. So I guess I'm here for the cops, too. And then it gets very confusing. And then you start getting all these, like I said, blurred lines. On top of that, why? and you might be like, okay, that's, a hor that's not even that good of an example. I'm not sold. Well, let me help sell you a little bit. Uh, because... We don't necessarily imagine back in the Civil War, say it's the 1800s and you are battle, you are fighting for the North and you are on the field in Gettysburg and you are fighting it out. <clears throat> and then it, it's over. The war, the battle's over. And then the next day you're like, man, yesterday was crazy. Like when we were out there on the field shooting. Wow, that was wild. You didn't say, hey, man. The Battle of Gettysburg yesterday was wild. Like, you didn't call it that. You called right. it, hey, that fight that we had yesterday, that was crazy. But mm -hmm. because now we have hindsight and we have all this information, we've named it the Battle of Gettysburg. So the same is applicable for, like, say, the Battle of the Bulge or Lexington oh, Concord. Yeah. Like, all these things. Like, the soldiers at the time were just like, wow, that was wild. That when we were fighting yesterday against the Germans. You know, that that's how it was. Now we call it the Battle of the Bulge. But you yeah. have, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Um, the I hope all of our names of uh, future or of our battles are named after something hilarious. But my but my <laughs> point is, we've had Chaz, right? The Battle of Seattle is is what I would say. Like, and I'm just I'm spitballing here. It's not going to be that. I mean, like it could be named something totally different. But look mm. at it as if it were the Battle of Seattle, Charlottesville, West Virginia, or Virginia, whichever one it was, the one where that kid ran over the Black Lives Matter uh, crowd. And the Nazi or whatever ran over yeah. the the crowd because somebody hit the back of his car with a two by four with a nail in it. Like, and he took off and plowed through the Black Lives Matter, hit a fat lady. She had a heart attack and then died. <laughs> and then but that's the true story. Like, nobody wants to hear that. But he, he didn't actually kill anybody. Some fat lady had a heart attack when she after she got hit by the car um, or maybe before. Like, there's really no way of knowing. Uh, but and I'm not defending his actions to that degree. Like, I, I would never say, oh, I'm glad those protesters no, I can't even say that because I, I think if you're in the road protesting, you absolutely should get run over. But I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not defending his actions of like, oh, he hit that person specifically because they were Black Lives Matter. I think that's unacceptable. But the fact that they were out in the road and they were protesting without a permit and they were purposely trying to go towards a protest that they disagreed with. I think at that point, they pretty much all deserved what they got. But um the fact that he was a Nazi does not help my case when I say like, I'm, you know, like I don't mind so much what he did. Uh, but the battle of Charlottesville, right? That's another one that looking back and that stems all the way back to 2017, 18, whenever it was, whenever it happened. Um, so if we look at it more like that, I think that the civil war has already started. We just haven't given it a name yet and it doesn't help that we haven't had an, a legitimate war since legitimate war yeah. since world war ii it was i don't think congress has declared a war or maybe it was the korean war anyways most yeah, of them we call them conflict it's, right. we call everything else conflicts or um what was the word you know when uh skirmish when i was <laughs> no when i was you know I, I was a desk guy and so whenever we had to do certain things with uh erb updates and like things in there there there's a um there's an actual drop down box, right? A menu where you put what type of like event it is. Like, okay, if you're doing an award for somebody, right? Like, say I, I, I'm giving somebody the Global War on Terrorism award, and then they go, what conflict was it, right? right. Or was it a war or was it um, police action? Term. Yeah, police action, peacekeeping operation. That's what the word is. Like, I could think of everything that we've done like recently is like peacekeeping offer operations um except for like kuwait i think was um was con a conflict it wasn't a war but yeah like world war ii i i would argue was the last even grenada was like we just went in and fuck shit up right <laughs> it's, so it's not yeah. will that be the case for this like i don't know and and but that's the discussion that i have with everybody when because believe it or not like people come to me for this sort of information like i've never considered myself this like a font of knowledge when it comes to uh this sort of thing but it just so happens i have enough information that people do trust my uh, opinions on some of these things so people do come to me often about this like hey when is the when when is the the boogaloo right that's what they call it when's the boogaloo kicking off whatever mm -hmm. i'm like yeah, yeah, first yeah, yeah. of all i am not necessarily affiliated with that group i am just somebody who is if i need to i will get involved in that particular activity. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that I'm a part of that because I'm not. No, I don't get like a newsletter or anything. I don't report to any <laughs> kind of meetings or whatever. But right, right. I'm the guy who, if called upon, I will go. Uh, but I am not a part of any kind of like uh, militia or anything. I'm not even part of the three percenters. Like I don't do any of that stuff. Um, but people come to me about this sort of stuff, not only like the Boogaloo stuff, but also like, hey, when is the Civil War kicking off? Hey, when are we going to do something about Antifa? When are we going to do something about Black Lives Matter? People come to me just because I like run my mouth all the time. Um, and I just, I happen to read up on it and keep up on the news about it, I guess. So I guess that's why people come to me and they keep coming back to me. So I assume I'm giving out decent information, decent enough information. But um, I think it's already, A, I think, and this is like not even a good answer. It's not even a real answer. I think it's either A, started already, or B, we're at the um, the Harper's Ferry portion of it, where it's mm -hmm. about to start. And it, like it's what it's going to be, and I guess we'll close out on this, and then we'll go into the actual topic. I think there's going to be, when I asked you what 
the you know what the line that they would have to cross for you to get involved um i didn't have an answer you didn't end up having a, a re- like an answer that you were happy with um i think whatever that is i guarantee most people are at that same point where they're like i don't know like i'm not sure where like they're very much sick and tired of it uh they're mm-hmm. they're ready to go and they're kind of like in the same boat we are where we're like when do we when do we hop in? Like, like playing yeah. double Dutch when they're like swinging the ropes and you're just waiting for that opening to jump in. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. kind of like where we're at right now. And we're just waiting for the good moment to, to get involved. But at the same time, like, I think a lot of people, whenever that event happens, whatever it is, we're all going to know. Yeah. And I can't even take credit for that. Cause I think this individual who texted me just a minute ago, uh, they actually told me that the other day. I think they said something along the lines of, "Whenever it happens, I think we'll all know." And yeah. I think that's I think that's a very true statement. I think whatever that line is that they're not supposed to cross before we get involved, I think you're going to see everybody all of a sudden go, "That was yeah. it. That was the line." And I yeah. mean, and yeah, I think it, yeah. I think I, it'll I probably have something Absolutely. to do with kids. I think is where it's going to be because even no matter how you feel about kids, because I know you're not crazy about kids, uh, but like (laughs) I hate kids. Right. right. I hate being around them, but I don't like uh, harm to come to children. Right. And I think that's that's the point that I was going to make is that just annoy me. People don't care about like there are some people who don't. When I was a single guy, I frankly didn't care. Even when I was married before I had kids, I didn't care about kids. If somebody showed me a picture of their kids, I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like at all. (laughs) <laughs> Unless they were like family or friends' kids, and even friends' kids was a was a stretch. Like mm-hmm. I would talk to them or whatever, but I didn't have. I'm like, I don't have anything in common with you. Like, go mm-hmm. away, go play or something. <laughs> but like, it wasn't until I had kids of my own that I realized just how precious children are. And mm-hmm. still to this day, I don't care as much obviously for other people's kids unless they're family or friends to some degree. But mm-hmm. like kids i recognize the value of children and the innocence and that we need to protect them we have a that was the one thing that i knew when i had kids i didn't necessarily feel love for my kids instantly when i held them the first time but i felt a an obligation as a man as a um, father that's a really good um just to interject really quick that's um a really good word to use in innocence because like yeah I, i don't like kids but that's just because they annoy me but like at the same time like that term innocence kind of defines why they're important and like if you just like look at that you go well that's like that goes right back to everything we're like man it brings it all full circle dude everything we were talking about before like the destruction of like everything that's good you know and like children are innocent and and they kind of represent that like they're not privy to all the horribles of the world right and like that's something that's precious no matter how you look at it and again like kid children annoy me you know i hate screaming babies and stuff like that but i still understand that like that is kind of like our future you know like that's our future and you have to protect them and like teach them the good values because if you don't then you have what we have now yeah and this is why you need to spank your kids folks um while we're here uh (laughs) Welcome to the chat, <laughs> like an hour and 15 minutes later. Uh, welcome to the chat, Jay Coop, Mike in Manitoba, King Cracker, uh, Megabit, and Buzz Busby. Uh, Buzz, Busby. Buzz Busby. Yep, I saw him sneak in too. Uh, hey, welcome to the chat, guys. Uh, and King Cracker makes a good point. My point would probably be if I was asked to come help. And I think that's where we are too, and we both agreed on that. If we were asked, we would go. Right. There's no yeah, question yeah, about that. Yeah, and my absolutely. wife and I have actually talked about that too. She said, if you feel... Like, and this is like all we've talked about it. Um, And this came up in the Iran when, when Soleimani, when uh, the, the folks, when they bombed uh, Soleimani, uh, I said, I like, I was conflicted. I had like, I had a moment. I'm like, would I have to maybe like get involved? Especially like you saw all the people crying about, oh, well, if Iran is huge, Iraq was a big mess and Iran is like way bigger than Iraq and they're going to have all these issues and they're going to, you know, enlistments are down, retention is down and all that stuff. And I was like at a, at a crossroads. I'm like, what if, like, what if I have to go? Like, and I don't have to go is the thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I would have to fight to go, frankly. But like, what if it got to that point where they were like, we need help. And would I be willing to do that? And I said, at the end of the day, I was like, it would be up to my wife. Because my answer is yes, undoubtedly, mm-hmm. like unquestionably. If my country needed me to go, I would go. But 
it would it'd be up to her because I also value the opinion of my wife. And any decision that I make goes through her, not because it has to, because I choose for it to. And I think that's how it should be for, in any married couple. Uh, you should run something by your spouse before you make any kind of decision, especially if it's a big decision like that. I mean, if it's like, mm -hmm. do I eat this sandwich after nine o'clock? Like, that's a, <laughs> that's a decision you make on your own. But like, if it's a decision that affects everybody, yeah, absolutely. You'd better ask your wife or, or spouse. Um, and that's what it came down to. And the same thing ha came up again when this whole civil war business we started discussing the civil war and she started to see more and more the chaos that was unfolding she said if you feel like you need to go i will support that and that was it that was the end of the discussion so like wow. i've i've not but she knew it was on my mind she knew it was weighing heavy on me i had never brought it up specifically i had never come right out and said it but she she knows like where my heart is and where my loyalties yeah. lay and that's a, that's importance. a woman that understands your conviction right there yep I mean, that's what happens when you're married for 14 years. It's right. like she just knows everything at that point. Like, I don't even need to talk half the time. Uh, but, yeah, that's um, – but, yeah, I think if he was asked to help, that's when he would go. And I think we're in the same boat. Like, the sheriff who deputized uh, legal gun owners to help with the riots, uh, that's another thing. If the police asked me to, if they said – because I've got a few friends who are in the police department, a few of them who are actually undercover. I can't even talk about them specifically. But a few of them who are uh, undercover who are like, hey, if, if – things get bad like i will definitely call on you if even if it's like not like if it's off the mm -hmm. record or whatever you know what i mean like uh <laughs> if i need your help can i count on you to help and i'm like yeah of course like naturally yeah. and and that that was before all this even came out like because he he does he deals in narcotics and uh but like if you if you ever need me call me like i'm here for you and i think that's the same way for both of us if if our officials who aren't total scumbags like if my governor called on me he could go <laughs> fuck himself but, yeah. but you know like if our officials who legitimately have liberty and protecting the population and the american way of life called me yeah absolutely i would go happily um and i think you're probably the same way mm -hmm. definitely so what are we talking about today we made it an hour and 17 <laughs> minutes without uh giving up yeah. the spoiling it or whatever well we kind of spoiled it already for everybody when we did the oh, poll yeah. <laughs> which was which was funny because <laughs> Because we kind of just did that as a joke to see what people would say. I was rooting for Balchinian, to be honest, because I really wanted to see, like, what kind of information we could come up with. And then we were like, well, there's probably, like, fan fiction out there. <laughs> Which works out, too, because now when when we get to 500 and I take that shot, that's the plan. Is like, I'll take the shot of El Chupacabra, the winning hot sauce here. Um, I'll take a shot of it. And then I will uh, read uh, the Balchinian lore and uh, the information. <laughs> and then if we can find some erotic fan fiction, which is I was looking for it the other day. Uh, and I looked up uh, Balchinian Rule 34, and I'm like, I don't want this on my history. But I yeah. looked. I looked anyways. And um, there's some interesting stuff. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, V. What are we talking about today? Yeah, so we uh, the winner of our poll ended up being the jackalope, which is really funny because um, I only like we when we were doing the the names of one when we came up with it, you were like, let's do four, and then we'll just throw some random ones in there. The, the first one that popped into in my head was the jackalope because I remember that being a cryptid from when I was a kid from uh, America's Funniest People. Remember with Dave Coulier, America's and, Funniest uh, Home Videos, because he yeah. did he did that too. Yeah, America. Uh, he did Full House. Yeah, that that was what he was famous for. But they had the jackalope on there that you know the fast as fast can be thing, and that's where I re like recalled it from. And so I thought, oh yeah, that's got to be like a cryptid, right? And I wasn't sure if that was like a real thing that they were making a joke about, or if it was something that they had created for the show to make a joke about. But in either way, it ended up being the winner. <laughs> and so, then of course we like, had to use fake names like the. Um, cause I had said, I had said Mothra at first instead of the moth man. And then you said man bear pig and then, which had nothing to do with it, but you said it and it was funny. So then it ended up being the moth man bear pig. <laughs> and then I was like, well, if we put moth man bear pig, we have to put fake names for all of them. So then it ended up being the jack off, jack off a lope, yeah, the jack off a lope. And then the, what else was it? The lamp stand frog. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The nightstand frog, or yeah, the lampstand, lampstand frog, and, and then the the, that's, and the Balchinian <laughs> because we couldn't come up with a better one, and that one was way funnier, anyways. Um, 
But yeah, then the the fans decided, and it was close at the end. Mothman Bear Pig almost won. I was won. really surprised how many people interacted with that. We have like five regular people that like are constantly interacting with us. But then when I see the poll, I'm like, what? Like eighty people? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is like once uh, we're we're kind of blessed to have um, Fetus Berry as a friend on Twitter because oh, he's yeah. got like thousands of people who follow him and who legit like constantly are working with or. Uh, reading his stuff and then the fans that we do have who engage with us and actually watch the show like they have a lot of friends too among them and once it like got caught i think like yakov got involved too and fetus berry crunch got involved and like once they retweeted it like then it just got spread out to all different circles across twitter like black twitter was voting on it and like everybody and, and like so I think that's what happened is when we do polls like that, and frankly, people don't really care about the something that they're voting on. They'll just vote on it because they're like, yeah. that sounds like the best one, and they just yeah, want to yeah, contribute. Yeah. So, for I mean, we had that going for us where it ended up being yeah. like either it was the funniest one or people actually liked the jackalope, which I sincerely <laughs> doubt. Or there yeah. were people who like just wanted to who didn't know anything about the jackalope, which was me uh, as yeah. of yesterday. Because <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> when we talked about it, I'm like, I don't know anything about the jackalope at all. Like, I'll have to do a lot of research on. Not that we do a whole lot of research leading up to the, <laughs> these shows, but pull up the Wikipedia. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know anything about it. I was like, I was the guy who thought the jackalope was real. Like, I was I like up until uh, like like you said before we started, uh, I said. If I found, if I had a calendar that showed the days that I learned and did certain things, and I like went through it and found the day that I learned that a jackalope was a real or wasn't a real thing, it would, if if it said 2019, I wouldn't be surprised. And I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. Like, because I really just, A, I didn't care. Like, it didn't affect me because I'm like, well, I don't live out there. I don't live in anywhere where there are jackalopes. Like, I was like, I don't live anywhere where there's jackalopes. I don't have to worry about them. You're not um, in jackalope country or right. anything. <laughs> so I'm like, and, and furthermore, like, what good comes of a jackalope? Nothing. Like, it's you can't eat. I mean, you could probably eat it, but I don't eat rabbits. I, don't, I doubt that I've ever eaten rabbit. Uh, and I don't have a jackalope. I don't collect. I don't hunt small game. So that's another reason, you know, and, you know, I don't hang shit on my walls of like animals that I've slain. So like mm -hmm. nothing about the jackalope was anything that I was worried about. Frankly, I've never lived even out in any area where there's I've never lived in jackalope country. I've never lived west of <laughs> Colorado, you know, right. so I, I, like who cares? And so I never bothered to look into it and whether or not it was real or whether or not it was a cryptid or whatever. I just assumed it was as real as like a regular rabbit. That was in the that happened to live in the desert. <laughs> so I was the guy <laughs> who we're going to talk about today uh, a little bit, I'm sure. But I was like a victim of this whole uh, jackalope conspiracy. But uh, what what did you learn about it when you were doing your research, V? Well, I, the, the funny stuff that I like learned is basically like how it was kind of something that well, and this is just like uh, summing up kind of like the the general idea of the jackalope is it was like a it was like a joke. <laughs> like it was like a joke that somebody made, and then it kind of became. A, we always talk about the P space. Fucking yeah, uh, yeah. what's his yeah. name? Dave. Dave. Somebody, somebody like made a joke about it, and then it kind of became like a real thing, and it inspired like this huge cult following. Like it's hilarious the amount of things that this spawned. Like the weird stuff. Like there's like. Um, museums <laughs> like museums there's like art and like all this stuff there's a musician um that sings about the jackalope there's um there's it's even in video games like apparently in your red dead redemption you can uh hunt and skin jackalopes in the first one so there's like and that probably like a... contributed to my belief in it because i was like yeah. i played the game and i was just like, all right you know and which i should have caught on because i remember now like in red dead redemption one uh you can find the Bigfoot. So like looking back, I'm like, okay, like I believe that the jackalope or whatever was not a real thing, but I'm sure at the time I was probably like, Oh, okay, cool. Like a jackalope, just like a deer, like no different. 
<laughs> so it gets better. It gets better. It gets better <laughs> though. Like it was just this weird thing, but like at some point it be it, get, it gained official recognition, which according to the Wikipedia I'll read here, uh, um, it says in 2005 the legislature of Wyoming considered a bill to make the jackalope <laughs> the state's <laughs> official mythological creature. It passed the House by 45 to 12 margin, but the session ended before the Senate could take up the bill, which died apparently. So in 2013, following the death of the bill's sponsor, Dave Edwards, the state legislator reintroduced the bill. It again passed the House, but died in the Rules Committee of the Senate. In 2015, three state representatives put forth the jackalope proposal again. This is stuff that's going through Senate. <laughs> you know this what cracks me up has... about this? Because Well, this is state Senate, which is like, what, like that's what yeah. should be important, first of all. Yeah. I think the state, we ignore, we largely ignore state government. Which is unfortunate. It's, it should be the other way around. We pay more attention to the national government, which shouldn't exist, frankly. Like right. the national Senate and the national. We should have a national Supreme Court. <laughs> the end. Because like that's because we need to have someone who is like, hey, this is the Constitution, and this is you know this is how we interpret. This is how it's interpreted based on a nine, uh, a nine. Uh, what the fuck are they called? Um, Supreme Court justice duh um a, a nine justice opinion okay that's what we should have and that's it and then the state government they pass laws and if the laws are challenged then they go up to the supreme court at the federal level but that's it like who gives a shit about federal laws like right. whatever like the, uh, the supreme court that's... justice league right <laughs> but <laughs> it should be the other way around we should care more about the state government but we don't and like and it's funny because you've made a great case as to why we don't care about state government because they're <laughs> out here looking at like they're passing let or trying to pass legislation multiple times on how to like should we make the jackalope the state national or i'm sorry the state <laughs> mythological uh animal uh mascot should we do that yeah. let's so waste they're, time they're... on that and they're gonna keep like apparently it says one of the co-sponsors dan's Weinzer said that he'll keep bringing it back until it, pa it passes. And then in 2014, the Wyoming Lottery adopted a Jackalope logo for its lottery tickets and marketing materials. Lottery officials chose the fictitious animal, which they named YOLO, yeah. <laughs> over the bucking horse, over a bucking horse and the state symbols. So, like, <laughs> this is, like, a thing that started out as a joke, which, like, is... <laughs> It's so ridiculous. But there's origin, too. Like, there's some interesting... Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're talking about all this stuff now, like, all the, the impact it has, and I want to ask you, I know the answer, but I don't know if people are watching now, like, why Wyoming? Like, what does it have to do with Wyoming, V? Can you tell us more about that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you. Okay. Is it, is it, because, is it because there's a... The the rabbits with the infections is that what we're is that oh, what we're come on into? come on you spoiled the 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 solution. Um, <laughs> no, I was going the city. Is there a city in Wyoming that's called Jackalope? No. So here's the deal. Here's what happened, and I'll give what you like it? the um, what happened was way back when, and I'm talking like pioneer days, right? And when, like the Oregon Trail days, and the mm -hmm. you know the Wild West, and all that. Like during that time, like over all those years people would have sightings of this jackalope and they would see a jackalope out in the wilderness when they were, you couldn't, cause people camped out a lot. I mean, that's, you, especially if you were traveling, there was a lot of traveling going on, cowboys, uh, travelers, lawmen, they would, they would travel and they would see these jackalope. And even in the towns, sometimes like just outside of town, they would see these jackalope just galloping along and they'd come home and they'd say, I just saw a jackalope or they come back to camp. I just saw a jackalope. So everybody knew what the jackalope was. They knew that it was a rabbit. And actually I'll pull up a picture here real quick. Uh, this dates back. Uh, I don't remember exactly when this, this picture was drawn, but I mean, it goes way back and they would say, I saw a jackalope and everybody knew what that meant. They knew that a uh, jackalope was, let me see here. Let's see if I can find a better picture or another picture. I'm not sure why that picture is not showing up. Or any of these pictures, frankly. There we go. Um, they knew that a jackalope was a rabbit with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, antlers. Antlers, and, yeah. And people just recognized what the jackalope was. Uh, and 
it was it became like again i like kind of like the same way i was where i was like well it doesn't really affect me like i don't really give too much a shit about like if this uh supposed jackalope exists because who cares first of all and you know my rule about um about animals like do i fear certain animals uh my rule is if it's small enough that i can stomp it to death it doesn't even <laughs> register on my possible list of animal fears so like um you know like rabbits snakes spiders uh any of those types of animals if i feel like and and we'll go even further like squirrels chipmunks that sort of stuff even dogs like dogs are kind of on that list because if i can i can or cats i can stomp all those animals to death if i really needed to and uh you know when i'm out and i feel like i'm going to encounter any kind of wild animals or wildlife i wear strong boots for that purpose like I, if i mm -hmm. come across a rattlesnake i want to be able to stomp it to death without having to worry about it biting me so i don't wear tennis shoes when i'm possibly going to encounter some kind of animal that i need to stomp to death that's like my in my morning routine as i'm getting my shirt on am i gonna have to stomp an animal to death today i don't know let me put on my boots so i'll i'll that's my rule on small animals as they start to get a little bit bigger like wolves um well at the same time i can stomp a wolf to death i understand the dynamics of wolf pack mentality and they're and how they're able to hunt so while i can stomp one to death i'm still a little leery about wolves um and then when you get to like sharks and bears you can't stomp those to death <laughs> of course they're yeah. on my list of animals i'm afraid of uh but a jackalope i could stomp to death right mm -hmm. like so it does not even like again that kind of fed into my whole thing about whether or not i was i cared about the jackalope's existence but and, but why wisconsin we were, <laughs> got we were talking about why like yeah like i agree with you oh why wyoming like, why wisconsin like that's what you know why wyoming off. did i say wisconsin I, or did i say wyoming wyoming okay. I, yeah no wyoming you're right so i'm getting there i'm getting there i promise uh, -huh. uh but these people, they would see these, they would hear about these jackalope stories. And it turns out jackalopes were supposedly very aggressive animals. And uh, they, people started to kind of get worried about them. And so you can see in this picture here, this jackalope apparently has wings in this painting. But uh, let me see here. Nice. Come on. Um, you know, here's another picture of a jackalope. And so, I mean, they seem like a very believable animal. So people were like me. They were like, why would I worry about this animal? Uh, maybe I haven't seen it. I mean, there's plenty of animals I haven't seen before in my life. Why would I worry about this thing? So it became a bit of like a folk legend, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, people were aware of it and people had grown to like tell their kids about it, but nobody had ever seen it. Uh, and one day... Uh, these two the these two brothers or two hunters they went out and this is in wyoming this is where it happened and this is why wyoming um they went out and they killed an antelope and they killed or a deer i'm sorry and then they killed a rabbit and they happened to have him lying there in their shop and one of them brought it up they were like you know it'd be really funny is if we shaved these antlers off or dug these antlers out of the deer's head and put them on the rabbit and like through taxidermy created a jackalope wouldn't that be funny right <laughs> and the it's other like one was like we would oh, right <laughs> and that that's how the jackalope came to be like the the what we modern or i'm sorry how it came to be in wyoming but how it like ga gained so much uh traction in like a more modern world right um they did it and then people were like i guess finally someone found out that it was fake but it, it happened in wyoming and that's why wyoming is notorious and why it's so popular as far as the the jackalope lore and that that whole story did you get anything else from uh the wikipedia that you read v um no well that was kind of it the the um the legislature <laughs> was really the only thing that i found kind of interesting about it um and then the stuff that will the solved thing that we'll talk about after but <clears throat> yeah that that what you were talking about with the wyoming i forgot i forgot that was wyoming with the kids they were like guys that had studied uh taxidermy as teenagers <laughs> 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 and then they just did that <clears throat> yeah that's that's um I, the the tall tales thing i think i could read that's uh 
That's Did not bad. Did you read anything about that? Like, were there any interesting tall tales about the jackalope? Well, the, just... Well, I was going to say, remember that show, Hey Dude, on Nickelodeon? Of when, course. Uh, what, remember, the, wasn't there Danny a line in the... Ti- in the Hansen? Uh, remember, there was a line in the theme song where it's like, watch out for all them killer cacti's and them killer <laughs> jackrabbits, right? Like, I just remember when, hey, dude, at the hey, end. And then what's her head? Uh, <laughs> Melody Hansen is uh, Ben Stiller's wife. Yeah. Is she still <laughs> his wife? Or did yeah, they get divorced? I think they're still married. I don't know. She's a cutie patootie. Yeah. Uh, she looked good back then. Oh, I like the other one, the brunette good. that was on the show. You know, I kind of want to look them up. You know what I did the other day? I was, um, because <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, I'm sure I, I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself here. But um, back in the day, when I was when when I was a youngun, a youngern, uh, I used to watch those shows. You know, Hey Dude, Salute Your Shorts. Yeah, that was absolutely. another one, right? Absolutely. Ugly. And what was it? Evan Lee, ugly. Remember the yeah, 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 camp yeah. counselor? And, and so that's the one. So I was looking. Somebody <laughs> had lips. somebody had shared a tweet. <laughs> From the guy who played Donkey Lips. Yeah, and I didn't Donkey know who he was. Like, they shared the tweet, and I think they alluded to the fact that it was Donkey Lips. and Or something tipped me off. It's like the best nickname ever. Right. <laughs> and, and so I it got me on this kick. I'm like, I need to look and see what all those folks are doing now. Like, did any of them? Because at a certain point, I'm like, I only remember what the red-headed mullet kid looked like. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he was the one who stood out, right? He was in Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... But I was like, he was the one that stood out as far as like what everybody looked like. But I had to look at some pictures because I remember having a crush on one of the chicks on that show. And then I realized, and then it got me on this whole kick of like, who were all the chicks from like the weird shows that I used to watch that I used to have crushes on as a kid? Because now I'm thinking like my kids are watching shows like The Thundermans. Topanga, like Topanga from yeah, uh, she was Boy one Man's of World. them. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, but those sort of things. And now my kids are watching like Thundermans and whatever other shows on Nickelodeon. I'm like these, I was like, my kids are going to start developing crushes on some of these actresses. I, I'm like, let me look back and see. And if you remember. No, yeah, most of these people, they just did Hey Dude. Um, was Ted, the guy Ted that we always talk about, he's been in a lot of stuff too since Hey Dude. Um, he was in Melissa and Joe. You know, I like Melissa Joan Hart um, a lot. Clarissa, I, 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 Clarissa explains it all. Yeah, yeah, she's another one of my crushes growing up. She was my, yeah, dude. She was like the girl that you watched and you're like, oh, someday I'm going to marry Clarissa. She's the girl I want to marry. <laughs> and she is still now, like, to grown up. Like, she is the girl I would want to marry because she's conservative. <laughs> she's conservative. She's Christian. She has, like, really good values. She's kind of thick. She put <laughs> – thick, <laughs> you know what I mean? She, uh, she, uh, she's put on a little weight since Clarissa and Sabrina. But, uh, you know, she, she's uh, – she's, I'd probably still hit it, you know, as they say. Well, I get it. I get what, are you, what, the hell, what the hell are you doing? You trying I'm to just up? retweeting. Yeah, I'm retweeting the thing so people can see that we're here again. Because Jay Coop and, and Mike and Manitoba, Mike and Manitoba came back. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody else has a chance to come back. Before we get back into the... So we can continue talking about Hey Dude and all the chicks we would have banged back oh, in yeah. the day. Yeah. Um, when we're supposed to be talking about the jackalope. Yeah. But that was the thing. That was what I was going to... I was saying... Like I was trying to think... I was playing my head through the uh, main mm-hmm. titles when it says... And them killer cacti's and them... No, no. Look out for them. You say killer cacti's and something jack rabbits so i think that I just probably remember the end when, hey dude at the end that's hey, dude. i re- <laughs> see i remember like right when the computer froze i was like doing this pose or something because i was like <laughs> i was trying to remember uh like that's why jack rabbit 
and jackalope i think like i just assumed like oh jackrabbit is the same thing as jackalope or whatever like i just assumed because again i didn't i've never lived in the desert uh, in the united states desert and or any of that and back out in like ranch country or whatever i've never lived there i've never had any desire to i've never had to worry about any of that stuff so like i'd never bothered to learn the flora and fauna of wyoming and mm-hmm. i just have to take them at their word so if two dudes decide to make this uh and a <laughs> couple of <laughs> couple of jabronis um <laughs> couple but, of Muldoons. yeah if i if i have to take them at their word they're like hey we got this jackalope finally here's proof and they showed it to me i'd be like all right right on like if i saw any of those pictures prior to <laughs> last year or whenever i learned that the jackalope wasn't a real thing uh had anyone shown me those pictures that i showed a little bit ago i probably would have been like oh yeah that's about what i imagined a jackalope would look like i've never seen one in person or whatever but yeah okay i got you um let me see if i can pull one up here again like if someone showed me that it looks like an animal that i could see existing i'm like oh okay cool a rabbit with horns like who gives a shit like okay i don't really care about (laughs) rabbits that much like they're they're fun pets but as yeah. far as desert creatures, like now this one would I be a little a, bit tougher for me to believe. I see a shit ton of rabbits over here by my house, man. They're all over the place, and, and like it's weird because you'd think that like being near a city, like they wouldn't go to like like you know housed areas where cars are driving all the time. But like I stand on my balcony and I'll like smoke and I'll see like fucking a jackrabbit just zoom right across. And I'm like, holy shit, those things are fucking fast, man. They move like hella fast. It's crazy. You'd th- think like something that's that like i don't know like the way their feet are shaped like they wouldn't be able to move so fast but those things jam dude they get up you know what i mean <laughs> are you rapping or are you telling me about uh nature this is not a nature yeah, documentary mean. the um so what's a jackrabbit exactly anyways like what is the difference between a rabbit and a jackrabbit do you reckon? i think a jackrabbit is just like a um uh like a wild rabbit i think that's just, just like a way of saying wild rabbit i don't know it could be a brand or what do you call it not a brand uh a style of rabbit <laughs> it's like a, a style <laughs> it's a species a specific species of rabbit i don't know i i know that because i grew up in the desert we used to see jackrabbits all the time they zoom across the fucking desert but like as far as i know they're just desert rabbits that's what that's all i know they live in holes they burrow in holes i know that much so here's something I mean, interesting i, I um I just looked right. up what a jackrabbit is. This might not be interesting. Like, to me, it's interesting because I didn't know it. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> jackrabbits are all in the same family as rabbits. All jackrabbits are hares, right? The six species yeah. of jackrabbits. Now, this is going to add to some of the confusion here. The six species of, of uh, jackrabbits are... There's an antelope jackrabbit. So, really? like... How is that? Like, you know, and then I start to wonder. I'm like, well, that probably just made people more confused. Uh, mm. let's see. An antelope jackrabbit. It actually just, it's actually pretty weird looking. It's, they've got these long legs. So I don't know if you've ever had a pet rabbit or if you've ever no. like held one. Like I, we no. used to have rabbits when I was growing up. I've seen and them, but I've never held one. Really. Rabbits are, they're, they're fun pets. I mean, they're, they don't do much. I mean, like I used to, we had them growing up. Like I think my entire life that, uh, as a child really? we had rabbits and they yeah. were just pets like not always like not more than one or two at a time that and even as i got old enough to where i actually appreciated like the pets that we had and was taking care of them myself like at that point we were only had we had like one rabbit at a time and we had a rabbit named grumpy we named him because i used to and it's i don't remember naming them because i was a, a baby or whatever but like when when i was a baby apparently we had four rabbits and it was thumper ip yuck that one i named because it was just some gibberish word i said as a baby and uh snowball and there was some other one but did they... you ever notice like you had you said you had a bunch of rabbits did you ever notice if the the rabbits actually fucked like rabbits so like i said <laughs> um if you would have listened uh no we only had um (laughs) when i was too young to remember we had these four rabbits right that was the only time we had more than one rabbit uh when i was old enough to take care of them and actually like fed them and changed their bedding and all that crap and played with them and stuff like at that point we only ever had one at a time and they like i don't know how long they lived but long enough to like most of my childhood we had one rabbit his name and her name it was it was a female her name was grumpy and uh 
and that one also I named or whatever. I think the only one that I never named that I personally didn't have anything to do with the naming was uh, Charmin was the last one that we had when I uh, like it was right before I moved out. Uh, they got a new one and the name was Charmin or whatever. And uh, but yeah, Grumpy like rabbits are very much like dogs are well dogs i would say dogs like they're they're happy to see you they want to be involved really? yeah they want to be involved with what you're doing uh but they are very particular about who they will allow to handle them and we had i remember mm. we had this box that grumpy would climb into and they don't do a whole lot they're rabbits they're very like stationary do or uh, domesticated rabbits are very like docile right. creatures they just sit around and hang out uh, and we would let him out every, or let her out every once in a while. And the dogs, we would put the dogs up or block the dogs off and let her, let Grumpy run around for whatever in different rooms. And, um, but I was the only one that could hold her. Nobody else could hold her. And the, and rabbits, like they're easy to pick up. Like if you, if you don't care about how you handle them and it doesn't hurt them, but you grab them by the scruff of their neck and pull them out and you can just hold them like this all day long. It doesn't bother them. It's just the scruff of their neck, just like parent, uh, animals carry their young by the scruff mm -hmm. of their neck or the nape of their neck uh rat, i never had to carry her like that because she would come out of her little box and i would just pick her up like you'd pick up a baby you know like under the armpits and then hold it like this and i would Not walk fun. on i'd go on about my day and i'd take her out and play with her for a little while but if anyone else tried they would get scratched and bit and i mean getting bit by a rabbit is no joke because they've got like those two teeth and they really? like yeah they're awful uh they got two they're teeth like on the top. incisors right that's the word incisors yeah they're like buck teeth though they're like right up front too. Buck teeth. yeah and and then they've got the ones what are they the chinese too. now yeah. <laughs> that's this chinese rabbit that i have um but yeah it's like very like quick like they're 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 pinches almost but like they can pierce through skin and it's it's terrible to get bit by a rabbit and then they scratch like cats too but very fast that's the only thing that uh I saw as far as like I can imagine rabbits mating quickly because they're very quick when they like scratch and they move their legs. And the thing with jackrabbits versus domesticated uh, rabbits that people typically see is they have very long or is like domesticated rabbits have very short legs, whereas these jackrabbits have long ones, which is why I think when people talk about how fast rabbits move, when you see domesticated rabbits, they're not nearly as quick as like jackrabbits and they don't nearly have, they don't have nearly as much stamina as those ones do because they can just zip like great distances. But a domesticated rabbit, you can catch them because even ones in your backyard or whatever, if you were really trying, you well, can grab not, one. Not, not everybody can. Not, well, them. not, yeah, I forget. But like no. in my backyard. You got the Elmer <laughs> fuds out there. <laughs> <laughs> but like. I was trying, I was trying to think of a good Bugs Bunny joke. <laughs> <laughs> duck season <laughs> rabbit Something season like they, do you know if they eat a lot of uh, carrots or what happens they, uh, yeah you call them doc that was actually one of our rabbits <laughs> names too was doc um, but like I think most of our rabbits at that time were named after like Disney characters because I was I was a youngin and I was watching Disney characters or yeah, Disney American. movies and shit but yeah they um, my dogs eat rabbits all the time they catch them in the backyard all the time not so much diesel like he'll play with them but in as much as like when they're dead, he'll play with them. Uh, Chewy will kill them, and then Diesel will play with them if Chewy doesn't eat them. Uh, but we get them in our backyard all the time, and the dogs protect my garden from rabbits because we get them for that. Or like they come to my garden all the time, and I had to build like fences around my garden and shit because the rabbits kept getting into it. Um, well, what about uh, what go ahead. about this? Um, back to the uh, well. I mean, I think we can both agree <laughs> that jackalopes are fake as shit. I mean, we know the origin is that where there was there was two Tom and V's back in the 1930s <laughs> that were fooling around, trying to have some fun, and they said, what if we merged the beast together <laughs> through taxidermy, and then they played a prank on everybody, and it, it was legit. It was but a great there's, prank. Um, there was something else that we forgot to get to about the the diseased rabbits. Right, Did right. And this is how that? this is this takes us back again cuz that what the 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 two guys who made the taxidermy, we in our time machine yeah, went back and did this machine. and played this prank. Uh <laughs> but before that there were sightings of them, right? So somebody had to see something. And I mean it had to have been it was wide enough spread and it lasted for right. centuries, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Something had uh, to have come from that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. And it lived long because typically, like if something happens, 
and this is something I'm reading about my philosophy of religion is like a lot of these religions, when they get brought up, if they don't stick, they have a very brief window that they can stick and spread. And if they don't, they're gone and you'll never hear about them. And I mean, there are like thousands and thousands and thousands of religions that come and go like every year that you'll never hear about because they came up, didn't stick, went away. And the same thing is true of like cryptids uh, and weird and like folklore and weird yeah. happenings within the world. If something comes up and people are like, you know what? I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. Or like that sounds believable. And then they go out looking for it and then they have an experience with that thing and then it sticks. And that's kind of what happened and why I think it's, it lasted as long as it did to the point where these guys were like, hey, if we do this, people are going to recognize it and they're going to know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and if it was just a story that people told their yeah, kids that's a, or that's whatever. That's a great point. Like there had to be something that spawned it, right? Like right. there had to be something like we were talking about the original story where somebody said, oh, there were all these jackalopes causing problems. Well, there had to be something somewhere in the time that these things came into like existence, quote unquote, right? Where you go, um, you go, well, somebody had to come up with it. Somebody had to see it and go, well, look, there it is. That's a jackalope right there. Like there it is. It's, or they imagined it and like somebody drew it and was like, what if I put antlers? Like somebody had to come up with this idea and like you have to, I guess, consider the fact that there was a, a general idea about it to say that it, it existed. You can't just go, well, and I guess there's some imaginative people out there, you know, like we always talk about, uh, you know, your Lovecraftian. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, I created Cthulhu, and now all of a sudden it's a thing, you know? So it's possible that somebody was just like, I'll make this weird little creature, and then it'll be in video games later on in life. <laughs> well, first of all, it's very funny that you would say uh, Lovecraftian, because I was actually going to make a Lovecraftian reference. but And then it's even funnier because you said you're Lovecraftian, and I was, like, immediately offended. I'm like, first of all, I don't even like Lovecraft's <laughs> writing. Um, like, I, I read it because I feel like it's necessary that I understand and read his story as like somebody who is interested in the occult and shit. Like, I feel like I need to read it, but I don't care for his writing. I don't think it's very good. Like there is some weird stuff in there that's worth reading or whatever, but like his writing is awful. Like, don't, don't put that on me. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but then I was also going to make a Lovecraftian reference. So I was kind of like stuck in, in the thing, but I was going to say like, if, if somebody comes up and says, Hey, Cthulhu, uh, this is the story about Cthulhu. And I read Cthulhu, which the Call of Cthulhu is a fucking boring story. It's not even interesting, like, at all. The shit that spawned from it is pretty cool, like, to look at and to, to like, read about or whatever. Or the games that have come from it. That's pretty cool. But, like, the sto original story, Call of Cthulhu, is fucking boring. And the writing isn't even good. Um, but, I digress. If you were to, like, if somebody told me, hey, this monster, and they described a Lovecraftian-type monster from any of his weird uh, stories, I would be like, well, that's just not real. You know what I mean? Like, th there's no way. Like, the things the things you're describing to me are just, that's just fictional. Uh, and the thing about the, the jackalope is, like, so many people had seen it. It's not like a Lovecraftian monster that was created by some racist in his basement who was writing stories or whatever. Um... <laughs> Yeah. He this is like something that people were seeing and like the story went from and back then they didn't have the Internet. They didn't have like even publications. Not everybody got publications. We can read right now. Like right now I could read the L.A. Times at the time. You couldn't have read the next town's newspaper, much less like one across the country. So like people all over the country or all over that area of the country, that region were having these experiences with jackalopes. So they thought. And so there had to be something, right, uh, that people were seeing beyond like, hey, my grandma told me this story, but my grandma's fucking bananas because there's no such thing as a jackalope. Like people were like, well, that sounds believable. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I think I've seen one uh, because they they may have. They may have seen something that looked like a jackalope. And I think that's what you were going to get to, V. What was uh, what what caused this? I'm, I'm playing stupid, yeah. but uh, like what, what caused <laughs> this uh, confusion that people had where they thought they were seeing jackalopes? Can you t talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, it turns out there was this disease that like, well, it's a, it's an actual disease. And like we've seen uh, humans that get this too, um, where basically uh, they get like a horn or like weird um, protrusions from their head and like it's weird to see like a human with it because you think it's the devil <laughs> and they have like a little horn poking out and so um, 
It's called Shopi Papaloma. Papaloma. The show Papaloma. Show Papaloma, yeah. And basically what show it is Papaloma is these... the boop, boop. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so these things get like horns coming out of their faces. And like the one on Wikipedia is, but I don't know if you saw the one on Wikipedia where it's coming out of its jaw. Like it looks. It I looks know like which one you're a... talking about. Hold on, hold on. I'll pull it, it up here. It looks like it has a fat lip and then it has like on top of that like a friggin' uh, – like a friggin' – looks like a tree branch coming out of it yeah that one. it looks like it's coming out of its face and so so they had to have seen these and got good god they're j- because you know people back then they're stupid they didn't they didn't know it was probably a disease they didn't have that knowledge and so they just assumed it was like this crazy friggin' species you know of uh of rabbit that had uh, antlers and such or demonic horns and so uh, that, that's pretty much how I think it came to be that someone saw these and go, those are jackalopes. We have a problem with jackalopes. No, it turns out you just have a, you have a problem with diseased rabbits. Here. Yeah, and that's how, uh, how it came about. Hold on, I'm trying to – I was hoping I would pull up this. Uh, oh, you know what? Hold on. I think I put it on the downloads. Did I put it there? I was trying to pull up a picture of like – I thought I saved a picture of a human with the – the horn but um yeah the whole thing with this and yeah that that one is pretty spooky the um that one that you mentioned let's see here if i can pull it back up like if you saw something like that in the wild that would be very abnormal even like today even if you knew what it was you're like oh yuck like this is weird yeah um and like back then people had this image of what a rabbit looked like and this doesn't it looks like a rabbit but it's got extra accessories on it and um but yeah, the show Papilloma thing, how that came about was, uh, and I'm speaking off of memory, so if I'm wrong about a date or whatever, you know, don't beat me up or whatever. Not like people come here for actual information. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but the uh, this dude, he was like presented with this rabbit that had these horns on it or that, that had this issue. And I believe his name was Show. As a matter of fact, I'll look it up just for that purpose and that's it. Um, but nope, it's not there. Hold on, hold on, stand by. Um, the guy named the guy named the disease after himself. Yeah, I mean that's talk about, talk about arrogance, narcissism, man. dude. <laughs> yeah, Richard, narcissism. it's Richard Edwin Shope is his name. Yeah, he um he was presented with this rabbit that had the disease. And they were like, hey, I found a jackalope, and this dude's like, well, hold on, you know, a learned doctor, a man of science. He's like, hold on, let me see if I can figure yeah. this out. So rather than um jumping the gun what he did was he did scientific method he did his experiments and found out that oh it was a virus that this rabbit got that was causing all this bullshit to grow off of his head and Mm -hmm. so then he he went further and the mad scientist that he was he took that disease that virus and he spread it onto a healthy rabbit and he was able to create another jackalope like he was able to (laughs) he was able to manufacture jackalopes like legitimate jackalopes and um, the really like the thing about these horns and people get them too, like you said, is mm-hmm. that they are cancerous. So he created cancer rabbits. Like that's is what crazy. that's what he created, and that's what these what you think is a jackalope out in the desert is actually just a cancer rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> which sounds less like i was thinking it and i'm like well that sounds pretty crazy and then i said it and i'm like that sounds really depressing like yeah. as somebody who had rabbits as pets or whatever uh you know like yeah, nobody yeah. wants a cancer or wants their pet to get cancer or any animal or anybody to get cancer it's yeah. a horrible thing right. but that's what it is it's like right. when you see a jackalope it's actually just a cancer rabbit which should make you go from being like, oh, wow, this is amazing to, oh, wow, this is sad. And like, we just ruined a cryptid species for people <laughs> by telling them that they're cancer rabbits. We totally did. Actually, I feel pretty good about that, to be honest. <laughs> so, well, let me ask you this then. How many out of five Bigfoots, how many do you give uh, the cancer rabbit? Oh, yeah, probably no Bigfoots at all for this one. <laughs> I'm going to pass on Bigfoots for this one because it's really just like kind of something silly. Although, no, you know what? I, I have to at least give it one Bigfoot because the origin was a prank. And, like, that's enough to go, I identify with these guys. <laughs> this is something that I would have done if I lived in the 1930s and had studied taxidermy. I probably would have done way weirder shit, like created chimeras, like merged, like, lions and, <laughs> and birds <laughs> so that I could really really freak people out 
Like that, yeah, that's uh, I, I can dig it. Well, you know, back then they didn't have much else going on. That's why, like, everybody has, like, 40 kids from yeah. that era. Or they didn't have, they a didn't have cable or video or games a, or a anything. Jack-a-lope. <laughs> a jag off a lope. <laughs> they had to uh they had to go and kick i mean one of like the most popular games of that era was kicking a can like what like <laughs> you look back at that time and you're like okay now i get why grandma has like 40, 14 kids and an alcohol addiction <laughs> um but yeah okay so i zero well one ish bigfoots or whatever yeah yeah i agree like i mean there's like no denying that these things are like we now know, which is it's like the thing that sucks <laughs> about scientific development is like the more we can learn the less cool shit that is going to exist. Cause like, what if one day look at it this way and uh, I guess we're, we're over on time. So we kind of have to wrap it up. But what if one day somebody came out and they had like scientific documented proof that explained away ghosts like all together, like, and it was irrefutable. Right. Which is kind of mm. like what this is. Like we know we're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like this is yeah. obviously like, this makes so much sense. Like what if somebody came out with some kind of like evidence of, some natural thing that mm-hmm. explained away ghosts or explained away. I don't know. What's another thing. Um, I don't know. Bigfoot. Let's say Bigfoot even like yeah, they had Bigfoot. something that legitimately like eradicated any kind of potential for a Bigfoot. Like what would that do to the paranormal community? It would shatter it. Right. Because we're like, well, if that, uh, so like Bigfoot, like if somebody did that to Bigfoot, we'd be like, well, if Bigfoot's fake and like, and, it can obviously be proven to be scientifically fake. Like what else is fake, you know? And like, whatever, what else can be naturally explained, you know? And then ghosts, like the ghost community that would like destroy, like there's so much network television that's based around ghosts. There's so many movies that are based around ghosts. There's so many ghost stories, right? There's only so many things that have like stories after it that are legitimately like popular enough that everybody Mm -hmm. knows what a ghost story is. Uh, if something weird happens, people instinctively are like, oh, ghost. Like now, like if somebody shoots somebody, like you're like, oh, white kid, right? So like um, <laughs> white kid in a school. <laughs> but, you know, like you have these things ingrained in your mind where you're like, oh, ghost. But like what mm. if there was all of a sudden a scientific explanation, a legitimate one that like totally eradicated the possibility that par- that ghosts are a paranormal entity? That's kind of what happened with the jackalope. Like all these people imagine like when this dude this uh mm-hmm. richard edwin shope this adonis of men this or this adonis mm-hmm. this cadillac of men yeah, yeah. uh when he um because I, I don't know if you've seen his pictures he's a very striking man like you look at him you're like damn this is like he looks hey. like a cool guy <laughs> who i'd like to blow right uh, no i'm sitting here like looking at his giant picture on my screen no, I, next I, I know to me, so i know I'm you're like, not gonna blow him or anything well I, why I not well because he's dead right oh no we can't do that thing <laughs> remember remember that uh that sex act where you like dig up a body and then somebody body slams it oh, yeah. while you're blowing <laughs> and you was eat that the, the one, one that we created no was that wasn't created, the real that wasn't the one the pink sock was the one we did the rko stunner oh, yeah, pink yeah, sock yeah. but the pink sock already existed <laughs> but there was another one somebody had brought up in the chat anyways um but we had read about it because it, it's apparently yeah, a yeah. thing that people talk about but um mm-hmm. yeah like this dude like when he introduces he's like hey based on at the time was like advanced science like he's like the jackalope isn't real like you're seeing a real thing but the truth is it's totally natural it's a thing that happens in nature and it's no different than a regular rabbit that you would see it's just got a cancerous growth on it and then like most of the people like what would that do if you had like all these stories and it would destroy your grandma's credibility your grandma's like (laughs) i saw a jackrabbit back in in 1802 you know and it would just destroy that. So I like, I wonder, I'm like, man, what if, cause I'm a huge paranormal guy. Like, right, uh, right. what would that do to me? Like if I had somebody come out with irrefutable scientific well, it's like evidence, that, um, it's know? like that, um, Norm Macdonald always talks about, he does a joke where he talks about, um, what if you found out that everything you knew was wrong? Like everything you believed was wrong. And he goes like, when you really think about it, like, everything you believe was wrong <laughs> like literally everything you believe is wrong like then what do you do you know like suicide <laughs> like, yeah. like the next step like at that point you go to you go to the rope store and then you go to the rickety stool store <laughs> so <laughs> what would you do though like if if you were that's a tough question because do you think you yeah. could bounce back from that like uh yeah. if if you found out that like let's not even say everything because if everything you knew was wrong yeah. like at that point you're like well i'm not starting over 
Like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah. But, like, what if, like, most of what you know was wrong? What if tomorrow... Here's a fun experiment, and I don't expect... If you want to answer in the chat, great. If you don't if you don't want to, you don't have to or whatever. I, this is a tough question because I don't even know that I have an answer. What if, like, you found out tomorrow... Here's the thought experiment. If the government came out and said, hey, look, this conspiracy is true, this conspiracy true is true, that conspiracy is true. Also, like... And they just like shattered, like everything that you're so used to, like turned out to be wrong. Not necessarily everything you knew, but like your normal day of life. They're like, oh, by the way, aliens are real. Um, I don't know. Like, what's another good example of something that would greatly affect you? We are actively trying to indoctrinate the youth in order to believe this particular thing. Uh, every Everybody in politics is involved in this giant scheme, and we all, in fact, do drink <laughs> adrenochrome. Like, what if these things, well, think, they came out and it was like true? Us, when, if something like that happened, I think guys like, and even me, like, I'm rare to put on the tinfoil hat. But even guys like us, we hear stuff like that. Like, the, at least, at the very least, the indoctrining of children, what you were saying, I would say... At that point, I'd go, I'd do the Earl frown and nod, and I'd go, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> That's literally what I would do. I don't know that it would affect me in any way, but I'd definitely go, I knew it, and then I'd, I'd stop doing whatever it is that, that has that effect on me. You know, and, and it's funny, like, and on a serious tip, I'm, I'm usually talking about how – uh, you need to get off get off the media sack like you need to stop suckling on the teat of media because <laughs> you're not um you're not forming yourself you know what i mean you're slowly subscribing to that um you know thought that group thought because it's constantly being put in your face and you know like phones man and like fucking social media that stuff is constantly throwing stuff in your face all day long and basically telling you what to think and so like you know and like my big thing was when i got off facebook like twitter i like because i get on there and like i poop dick and fart and joke <laughs> and there's nothing wrong but facebook i had like family and like friends on there and it was like this huge political like un like total like horrible nightmare where people were like if you don't think this and it was like awful and then once that stuff came out where it was like they were selling our information to the russians like i was like no i'm done with this and that was like huge for me like looking back i go man i'm so glad i pulled away from that because i think my life is different now being disconnected and not even just like literally but like figuratively disconnected too where i'm like i kind of don't know what's going on a lot of times i go hey what what did you hear about this to you <laughs> i'll send you a message i'll go i saw something about this what, what do you know about that because i know you're more informed with me on than me on current events most of the time and so like that that's kind of how it works for me instead of going oh i gotta ask all these other people on the internet and this this and that and i think um I think that's like, you know, like I said, to wax philosophical, I think it's important to disconnect because the more you are connected to that, the more you're literally like being brainwashed. Like, the, and that's, there's no other way to put it. Like, like it's hard not to be brainwashed in a society where that's the goal, especially like, um, like, the, and <laughs> you know, I attribute this to like when I took marketing in college and like for like film, like film marketing. And it was like, I, that's when I realized, holy shit, like they're out to brainwash you, like literally brainwash you and like imagery that like you don't even real like seriously, dude, like there is um, subliminal imagery in in movies, in ads and everything that like they're trying to get your attention, you know, and it always has to do with death and sex. Apparently, those are things that humans love of death and sex and so when you start to see that and you go this is the only way to get people to buy your product like how do you get people to buy your product instead of just candy grabbing their money from them and forcing them to buy it you have to figure out subliminal messages you have to figure out different gambits to make um these people come in and buy your shit like like literally like that's how you advertise that's what advertising is is convincing people to buy your shit and at its base and like when you think about it like that advertising is everywhere that's exactly why social media exists it's not because they want you to talk to people it's so the advertisers can have their banners and all this other shit constantly flashing in your face and so when you realize that that is an existence the thing like just advertising alone then you have to look into the aspect of like propaganda and like all these other sort of things that are trying to like lead you in their direction and like man i'm the first one to step away from the 
the sheep herd. You know what I mean? And I go, wait, what are you guys gathering so much? Something's wrong here. And like, it, and it's because of that, that lemmings aspect, you know, where you go, you're all going to walk off a cliff. And I'm not sure as hell ain't going to be the one in the back going, where are we going? Where are we going? You know what I mean? I, I want to be the guy that like watches everybody go off into the cliff and go, holy shit, man, I seen that coming. You know what I mean? And, and I, it always comes back to me going, everybody's got their blinders on. They don't really. And this is me, like my tinfoil hat moment where I'm going, everybody does. I was just about to say, I was like all those times <laughs> that I'm sitting here <laughs> rattling off, like my mouth's going a million miles a minute. Like this is you right now. That's what you're doing. So yeah. like anybody who says yeah. V's not a conspiracy theorist, now's your chance <laughs> to call them out. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's true. Like that's the point when I go. People, people don't realize how much they're being brainwashed, and it's happening. Like I, like there's, it's legit. And like I, before, like when I was younger, I would have been like, eh, whatever. Like yeah, okay, watching TV. No, dude, you are constantly being brainwashed by media, by marketing, by everywhere you turn. There is some form of something that is trying to get through to you, only because they need your money. Like that's what it comes down to is they need your money and so they have to figure out a way to get it, whether it's some political campaign, whether it's some sort of marketing scheme to buy something. Like it's crazy. Like think about what is the thing that you saw the most of this week that like has made you consider – like the um, – here's one um, – that the last of us video game the last of us 2 video game that came out recently like i don't give a shit about that game at all but i have seen a shit ton of ad not just advertising for it but like tweets about it like holy shit like this is like marketing right here like it's being fed into my face constantly and i'm thinking about it enough to where i go i wonder what that game's about but i'm the type of person that i step back and i go oh, i don't give a shit what everybody's talking about you know the contrarian i guess you could say and so i go i go i know i know what i need to know and that is that there's gay stuff in it and that's enough for me to go oh i don't i don't give a crap about <laughs> so a game with some gay stuff. the funny thing is that's not even probably true i think what you're saying about there being gay stuff in it comes from a tweet that i made <laughs> <laughs> so like i ruined it for you because i watched the sex scene uh i was curious right um i was like let me see because there's a sex scene in it right and that was coming up a lot but what nobody was really talking about was that it looked like a gay sex scene like <laughs> the chick people did bring it up that she was she had like masculine features to her uh body model and I jokingly said that it looks like uh, Naughty Dog took the model from Norman Reedus in Death Stranding and just put a girl's face on it because it looks like a man's body. And then when you watch the sex scene and like you can have I, I encourage you to have a different opinion with me, but you won't because if you watch the sex scene, she is flat chested, muscular armed. And she's just got long hair. Like, if you didn't know that she was a chick, you would think that the main character, or that the dude on uh, The Last of Us 2 was fucking another guy in this <laughs> sex scene. So I jokingly called it the gay sex simulator. And um, <laughs> because I was like, let me see what her boobs look like, right? You know, like, that's what you do when you when there's, like, yeah. a sex scene or whatever. Like, let me see what the boobs look like. And then, like, yeah. you pull it up, and it's flat-chested. She's, fl she's, a... she's more flat-chested <laughs> than a Japanese 12-year-old boy. That's... That's actually a really good segue into something I was thinking about. Um, you said, I'd like to see what her boobs look like. And it's like, I always tell you, I watched um, Monsters Ball specifically because I had found out that there was a sex scene with Halle Berry in it. And so I didn't watch any of them. I still haven't watched any of the movie, but I saw that scene. I watched that scene where Halle Berry is getting pounded out by uh, Billy Bob Thornton. And it was like impressive. Like that was enough for me to go, well, it's not Academy Award worthy or anything, <laughs> but she's definitely getting pounded and he and like at the very least if that sex scene wasn't real and it was simulated as they say then it was damn like it was damn good it's hard not to believe that it's it not looks yeah like, it looks like she's getting pounded but that wasn't what i was going to say i i watched um total recall this week um the one with colin farrell which mm -hmm. I loved. I, it was great. It, it's such a great moment for me when I can watch a movie and appreciate it because it's still misogynistic. Like, it still objectifies women. And they did that amazingly. And one of the things that, like, I specifically watched it for is because I know that it was, like, kind of like a reboot of the original one. And so I wanted to see if they paid it homage to, like, the best scenes in the movie, which they did. There was one that wasn't there, and I was a little upset, but they did. And one of the first ones that I was... 
I was like, all right, this had better be in there, was the scene when the girl comes out and she's got three boobs. Yeah. <laughs> she's got three boobs, right? She goes, doesn't it make you wish you had three hands? <laughs> and like that was the first thing I was like, that scene had better be in this movie. And sure as shit, <laughs> they literally – like and they updated it right it's a reboot so it's a better looking girl with like better looking tits and like three tits right and she says the same line makes me wish she makes me wish and the second the second scene i was hoping for was you know that scene where arnold throws the guy out the window and it's like into space and his eyes bulge out of his head i was i was hoping for that but they didn't they didn't put that in but everything else delivered i really enjoyed i it was like kind of like there was a lot of scenes of them jumping off of things in slow motion that I felt like they could have de- done without, like they overdid that. But everything else was good. It was kind of like a mind fuck. There were a few things that like I noticed right away that was like uh, like I always talk about symbolism. You know, uh, did you see Total? Am I spoiling it for you? No, I watched <laughs> it. I don't Total remember. Recall. I mean, I watched it years ago because I'm a big Colin Farrell fan. Like I like his. I think he's yeah, a like, good yeah, actor, yeah, yeah. even though he's like. Yeah the same he's like not much he's he's just like a regular dude who's like hey i can act like an because you and i both do the same thing i mean i'm i wouldn't consider myself a good actor but like i can put on different hats and i can be like you know i can be theological did you tom know, did you know that uh, i can be that, appropriate tom i can be dick and fart joke tom i can yeah. be loving father tom like i put on different hats i think that's what colin farrell does as far as acting like yeah. he just puts on different that, hats um, did you know that Colin Farrell, when he was 18, tried out for an Irish boy band called like Boy Train or something, <laughs> <laughs> and he like didn't get the he didn't get to be in the boy band. I get, well, but no, shame. there was this inter- there was this interesting thing, and in, like this is me t- getting all film analysis. There's that scene, and I'm, if you saw it, then you remember they had to go through the earth, right? They, there's this thing where they ride this elevator and it takes you from one side of the earth to the other and it goes straight through the earth and like through the earth's core. And so every time they went through, the gravity shifted and then they go upside down and then they'd be right side up. Do you remember that? Do you remember that how that happened in the movie? Like that was a constant thing? I don't. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember. Okay, it, but... well, they did that and it seemed like a cool thing like to add, but like as a movie film analysis guy i realized like why that was necessary and it's because um we had to be keep, kept reminded that his world was literally being turned upside down like con- like not just literally but figuratively like that's what kept happening because he never knew like is this real is this recall am i really why watch it again if you haven't dude i really enjoyed it man i was kind of like shocked like wow this is like a breath of fresh air and all these shitty movies out there is there's one where there's still misogyny and it still has the scene at the end where they're kissing in the fucking uh sun going down like that's that should be the end of every good movie right there. <laughs> that should be the end and like luke george lucas dude and i quote like george lucas said if you want a blockbuster a blockbuster movie at the end of the movie you have you you end it with two with a man and female kissing in the sunset that's how you end a movie and think about how many movies you've watched that that is the ending and then they do the pan away like the right into the sky that's just how it works man that's what everybody wants to see at the end of their movies <laughs> i'll say it that's what i want to see i want to know the man got the girl that's what i want to know you know what um <laughs> I don't know if you could see me when I was doing the. I, was trying I did. To do the... I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but no. Yeah, you're right, and I think uh, I'm glad that uh, you brought that up because I w- I did want to talk. I, I know we're way over on time, and I still have to make a a copy of my Greek or scan my Greek homework or whatever so I can send it in tonight. Like that was I, I purposely. I, I just I blew it off. I'm like I got I got more important shit to do. I got to take I got to find pictures of the damn jackalope and put them on the thing so we can share it. <laughs> um, but the. Uh, no, like what you said about the world flipping upside down. I think a lot of people don't. I can't, like they kind of like ha- they're still at a point. I know there's like a big. There's been a shift, right? In like whether or not because it used to be like somebody would be like, "Oh, did you see the news?" Like we all kind of knew the news was bullshit, but like at the same time, people were like, "Hey, did you see the news last night?" Like such and such happened, and da 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 da. And like right. nobody, like we knew it was fake, but at the same time, we believed it. And like looking right. back, you can be like, "I believed. I used to watch CNN." And I believed them, you know, like I, I read the Wall Street t- or the uh, the New York Times or whatever. And I believed it, you know, and now you look at it and you're seeing all these things now that they've been called out. And it took Donald Trump to to call them out before we were yeah. like, oh, they were fake. Like they've been yeah. and, and it's not like he just said it 
and we were like oh yeah they're fake because donald trump said it is but because like now people are like well let me look and see if there's any merit right. to this and there's finding all these cases in which the new york times and the cnn and uh all these uh, wall street journal even like, like these these newspapers the new yorker they're they're finding out that these newspapers these publications are fake like and it's straight up fake and it's all for ratings and msnbc like these these people that you used to trust that you were like well you know they spent their whole lives doing this clearly they know what they're doing authors you know uh public or people who are like contributors to these news organizations you're like well they've spent their whole life doing this clearly they don't have an agenda and they know what they're doing and they'd be honest they're only being honest they're not they're not they're biased or they're not biased i'm sorry you know you you trusted them and now we're like all the time this whole time we've been lied to like Right. And I was like, and I was giving them the benefit of the doubt and they have disappointed me and they have proven themselves to be fake. And so when you say that about the world getting flipped upside down, I think what I, the one thing that I did want to say is you have to be anti, it's not that you have to like not trust the media. You have to be anti-media. Like you have to mm -hmm. be against it and you have to, you have to step away entirely from it. And this is why I don't, I'll look at the news and I'll be like, and not for the purpose of like gleaning information, but for the purpose of trying to determine what they're trying to cover up. Right. Because that's all the media yeah. is now, is one big attempt to spin something that happened. If they mm -hmm. talk about it, chances are there's a reason that they took that story. They don't take stories that they can't spin. Um, if you look at some of the stuff that's going on right and I can't even think of a good example off the top of my head. I've read about one the, or earlier and I meant to talk about it today, but I totally forgot what it is. Stories of these things that are happening, when we do hear about it, it's because they're doing damage control. And that's the only reason it gets brought up. If they can't do any kind of damage control and they can't spin it in a positive way, you won't hear about it. You have to hear about it from somebody else. And that's yeah. the people, that's what we're supposed to be here for. It doesn't do us a whole lot of good because I can't even remember what the fucking thing was I was supposed to talk about. But <laughs> typically, like, we're the ones who talk about the stuff that nobody, that the media says, well, that's just not true. We're not going to cover it. Or that's true and we're not going to cover it, rather. Um, right. Or, like, we need to spin it and give, like, the story that we're being told to give by who the powers that be. For instance, like this Maxine or Gillette or whatever the fuck her name is, but Epstein's girlfriend, the chick who used to handle oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the human trafficking. And she was in the room for most of like all the all these like celebrities and politicians who went down to Epstein Island. She was in the room. She lived in New York and she like had a penthouse like right there with Epstein and or she would stay in the in the same building or whatever as Epstein was in the room when he was had his you know popular uh celebrities and politicians in the room fucking kids like she was there she's mm -hmm. the person who if pressed i get and here's my opinion i don't know if it's gonna be true or if, if it's if there's anything behind it that i can i can't back it up with anything legitimate but then again ask me to back up epstein killing not or not actually killing himself i can't there's no evidence they did a very good job mm -hmm. of covering that up but we know mm -hmm. and everybody knows but this chick she got caught and i guarantee one of two things is going to happen and this is like an easy guess she's either going to commit suicide i.e she's going to be epstein the same right. exact thing is going to happen and what's funny is it's going to happen exactly the same way and nobody's going to question it nobody nobody with any like status is going to question it yeah. so she's going to go away just like epstein because what happened with mm -hmm. epstein nothing it went away and then people like us keep questioning it like hey how come nobody's investigating yeah. this whole child's ring, yeah. this child sex trafficking WTF, ring? WTF, man. Uh, the <laughs> same, I mean? it, she's supposed to go to the New York, this New York uh, facility, this prison facility, where the same thing is going to happen. And she's going to be killed. And, and, and or I'm sorry, she's going to be killed. And she's going to be referred to as a suicide, death by suicide. suicide. Yep. And the cameras are going to be gone. And the two people who are supposed to be watching her are going to be supposedly tried for yeah. der dereliction of duty. Or... And this is the one that I pray for every single day that justice will be served in her singing like a fucking songbird about everybody who mm -hmm. ever did anything and can prove it with some kind of like video evidence of some sort that was maintained and in which and, and 
frankly, I don't care who it is. And this is where I cross party lines without any question. If it's a Republican, if it's a Democrat, if it's a celebrity, if it's a Christian pastor, Protestant pastor, if it's a Catholic priest, if it's my mm -hmm. mother, like whoever it <laughs> is, if they abused a child or had sex with a minor of any kind, they should never see the light of day again. And I pray mm -hmm. that they do face this justice. I, I pray that they offer her a deal in which they say, here's what you're facing We'll t say it's a say it's a hundred years. We'll take a year off for every person that you rat on and can prove was was uh, involved in these particular things. And mm -hmm. then she says, "Okay, I got camera footage of all these politicians, all these celebrities, and I'll give them to you right now. And they're they're fucking children on camera, and I'll give them to you. And I pray that they offers her something like that where she can prove it." And that's right. that's all I want in this world. And I don't care who it is. If it ends up being Donald Trump, so be it. I don't think it is. I don't think that he was involved in any of that. If it does, I've been surprised before in the past. And if it mm. was, and if he did uh, uh, actually sexually assault a child and she can prove it, send him, send him away. You know what I mean? Like, And you know mm -hmm. I'm a huge Trump supporter. Yeah, but I don't care. Frankly, I just I want justice to be served. And I think she's the one, assuming she doesn't get suicided, She's the one that'll deliver it. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyways, with that, did you have anything else that you wanted to say, V? Did you want to close out the episode for us? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think it ended up being pretty fun. I, I like that uh, we kind of strayed from the topic. But we had stuff to say today. I, I think um, the beginning of the episode went well because we got right into our, like, <laughs> our pontificating. You know, we which is funny because we talked about this recently where it's like, well, we... we um, we have this platform now and like it's something that I realize is why I enjoy the show is because we can get out these like moral values and these things that we believe our convictions, right? We can get our convictions out and we can go, this is what we believe and I hope you guys agree too. And if you do, then let's practice it together and keep, you know, moving forward to make life better for others and, and us and our and our families and, and whatnot. So I think it's I think it's funny that we got right on that <laughs> this time around. And like we did have a topic and and uh to be fair it wasn't like an easy topic to cover because it's kind of something just silly but we ended up doing it anyways and i think we should be i think we should be glad to say that we were able to accomplish the show albeit with some uh, minor technical difficulties um thanks guys for all you all you dudes that showed up our our best bestest of pals jay coop mike and manitoba and the rest of you dudes we really appreciate you showing up and we'll see you out on twitter don't forget to follow us on the twitters and the instagrams and you know whatever what have you's the um no, it's funny. I did want to talk about something uh, with Megabit Banshee. The uh, so, anyways, I was on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. Like, would it be something <laughs> else if like every week I'm like, oh, like for I was a like, second, I was like, I Megabit. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something else? No, I'm just kidding. Um, the uh, no, yeah, you you summed it up great. Um, appreciate you guys coming out and uh, sticking with us, even though we had that technical difficulties. We are at. What are we at now? We are at 477 subscribers. Seven. Yeah, we gained two over the course of this particular transmission today. Uh, we did have thumbs down for some reason. I noticed that we were like somebody shows up to like give us the thumbs down <laughs> like one person. <laughs> but now it's gone. So, oh, oh no, that was from. No, because remember that was one. the previous the video show. when it got locked out. So yeah. it's gone, anyways. Any yeah. of the any of the stuff that gets done right now is going to be meaningless because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two videos, merge them, and submit yeah. them that way. Kind of like what happened with the nightmare episode. I had to like edit it in such a way that um, I had to re-upload it. So it won't even matter, anyways. Anything that's done uh, as far as likes, thumbs up, thumbs down. Matter of fact everyone do me a favor and give us a thumbs down right now because this video is going away <laughs> anyways and i have to when i have to merge them together then come back later and give the thumbs up to the submission um i can't bring myself to do that you know what i'll do it i'll do it for us <laughs> i but, can't bring myself to do it no i think what happened was i remember when i was watching when the thumbs up or when the thumbs down happened it was when you and i were ranting about homosexuals and how it's in uh, <laughs> immoral to be a homosexual yeah. um and and then transsexuals and we were bitching all that stuff uh, but yeah, no, I appreciate you guys all, um, 
I like how Mike's like handed in incomplete Tom. You can say I didn't understand it. It's all Greek to me. Unfortunately, I can't use that joke anymore <laughs> because I'm learning Greek. So like now, like I can read Greek and I know what many of the words say. Like I know 50 percent of the New Testament, uh, the New Testament in Greek based on where I'm at currently in my studies. Like I could read I could read and understand 50 percent of the New Testament in its original language uh, based on where I'm at now. The. uh but yeah, like I can't, uh, unfortunately, and it's funny because like people are learning like legitimate languages, like useful ones that are still in existence today. I'm learning Koine Greek, which is like from <laughs> thir or 300, or I'm sorry, like what, whatever, uh, you know, anyways, it spanned from like 100 years BC to 100 years AD, and then it's gone. Like it's no longer useful. So I can, I can read, I'll be able to read the New Testament the end and maybe some accompanying supplements but it's a requirement for my seminary and I'll, I'll probably be able to read like a caveman or speak like a caveman in modern greek but that's about it um other than that it's useless uh other than that i don't really have anything else to say v did you have anything no that's it you summed man. it up all right uh we'll see you guys next time and uh if you haven't already tell all your friends to subscribe so that I can drink that hot as, as unhappy as I am about having to drink a hot <laughs> shot or uh, a shot of hot sauce or whatever. Like I'll do it for the show because I think it'll be funny. And because I promised you guys I would. And, and believe it or not, we went from like what? 440 something mm. to 470 something over the last couple days. So, I mean, that's, there's something to be said about that. I assumed, <laughs> I, I imagine the only person I wouldn't put it past is like Mike in Manitoba going out and creating like 40 uh accounts on you on google <laughs> so just so that he could come back because mike in manitoba god bless him when i when i sent mm -hmm. him that that video that i mm -hmm. did for my class he went and liked it and commented on it and so was like sharing it and stuff i was like what a guy like all the people in yeah. my class were like Decent. man i was like you like people in the class were like you had somebody like or somebody actually liked your video on youtube and i'm like oh that's weird i don't know who it was <laughs> they commented on it too <laughs> oh I, who is that guy i don't know uh, but yeah, um, oh, he made his all wife right. subscribe, but all right, guys, we'll see you guys <laughs> later. Behave yourself and, uh, you know, we'll see you next week.